Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for August 27, 2018. Ralph Fatillo, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is RSA 28920, public hearing and notice reading. The first one is Elkins Cemetery. In accordance with the provisions of RSA 289, the town of Hampton is seeking direct descendants from the old burial ground known as the Elkins Cemetery, located off Exeter Road at the off ramp to 101. Burials occurred from 1851 to 1893 with the oldest known stone being that of Mary Elkins, dated 1851, and the last burial being of Johanna Elkins, dated 1893. A total of grave site, 12 grave sites exist in the cemetery. The town intention is to make this cemetery a municipal cemetery for the purposes of preservation and maintenance. Direct descendants should contact the town manager's office at 100 Winnicunit Road Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842. The second cemetery is the Bachelor Cemetery. In accordance with the provisions of RSA 289, the town is seeking direct descendants of the old burial ground, known as the Bachelor Cemetery, located off Mary Bachelor Road, near Timber Swamp Road. Burials occurred from 1823 to 1900, with the oldest known stone being that of Jevi Bachelor, dated 1823, and the last burial being that of Mary Ann Bachelor, dated 1900. Total of gra 12 grave sites exist in the cemetery. The town's intention is to make the cemetery municipal cemetery for the purposes of preservation and maintenance. Direct descendants should contact the town manager's office at 100 Winnicunit Road, Hampton, New Hampshire. The third cemetery is J. Freeman Williams Cemetery. In accordance with the provisions RSA 289, the town of Hampton is seeking direct descendants for the old burial ground, burial ground known as the J. Freeman Williams Cemetery, located between 220 Drakeside Road and 222 Drakeside Road. The gravestones are unobservable in the cemetery. The town's intention is to make the cemetery a municipal cemetery for the purposes of preservation and maintenance. The direct descendants should contact the town manager's office at 100 Winnicunit Road, Hampton, New Hampshire, 0342. Mr. Town Manager, would you care to speak on this? Mr. Chairman, we have published in accordance with the statute, RSA 289, for 60 days of publication, and we have received no responses from any direct descendants. The statute provides that if the cemetery is more than 60 years old, the town may move to accept it as a municipal cemetery because it's not being cared for. In each case here, this, these cemeteries are in fact not being cared for. This would preserve them and protect them under the statute. So where, where do we go from here with this? Uh, the, the selectman would be asked to make a motion to, in accordance with RSA 289, to accept these cemeteries as municipal cemeteries. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. And I will second. Any questions? There's a public hearing. Is there any questions from the public in reference to these three cemeteries? Seeing none, make a mo the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. I thank the town manager for bringing this. And, and I do too. As a Boy Scout project a number of years ago, mm. we we did yep. the uh, the Elkins Cemetery, and and it was bad then. And I, I've looked at it now, and. Yep. And the bachelor one is really hard to find, and, and the other one I've driven by there. I drive by there two or three <laughs> times a day, and I've never even seen it. And it's out right, right out close to the road. Yeah, it's right on so the road. So yeah. they do need to have some preservation yeah. and protection. And this is history. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, the public hearing is closed at 7:05. We'll start with public comment. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm not sure what the protocol is. Come right up here to the. And it is just public comment. It's not back and forth. It's just public comment. Yep. I, I just have a, a very brief comment to make. Uh, my name is Glenn Gagnon. The, uh, I'm the owner of the business that was discussed uh, last week in the last uh, Selectman's uh, meeting. 
And the reason that I came here is uh, twofold. Uh, one, um, I'm anxious to hear what the plan is to resolve the issue that we have, uh, which was preventing me to, for, from opening business on the, uh, during the seafood festival. Uh, but the second thing was, is almost more important. Um, I was very pleased, and I want to thank the Board of Selectmen uh, for uh, taking the time to listen to our concerns. Um, to listen very in a very detailed way and come back with uh, comments that were greatly appreciated last week. And uh, specifically, um, select person Barnes and select person Griffin, uh, thank you very much for advocating for my business. And uh, I look forward to uh, hearing the resolution and look forward to opening the Seafood Festival, and I'm praying for good weather. We so, all are. Yeah, cool, we are. Cool weather. Cool weather. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. You. Anybody else from the public like to speak? Mr. Ralph. Just give your name and, and address. Uh, Ralph Fatello, 3 Marston Way, Hampton, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm here basically as a, a courtesy call and a public service announcement. This Friday is our 11th annual uh, Wounded Warriors Hit the Beach at 18th Street uh, uh, on, North, on North Beach. This year we have between 100 and 135 wounded veterans from all over New England that are coming. All the volunteers are in place. Uh, police and fire are aware of it. They're going to bring the chief uh, uh, said they were going to bring the garrison flag, so we'll have that icon up there. I've emailed you all, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, so typically I would pass it out. But so, anyways, uh, everything is in place. Uh, the the long range surf forecast is it started out as flat all week long, and then it was Friday two to three feet, and now it's up to three to five feet. Yeah. So. We're going to have our hands full, but we've got a great group of uh, volunteers. They're all watermen and men and women that surf, and uh, we're looking forward to another great, you know, Wounded Warriors hit the beach. Good. And as I said in the email, if any of you want to stop by, the public is uh, invited to stop by, and if any of you wanted to try surfing, I would personally push you into a wave. <laughs> if I was going to be around, I, I would do that. <laughs> that's, that's all I have. Have a good night. You're a brave man. Anybody else would like to speak? Yes, sir. Just come up. Am I allowed to speak as a non-Hampton resident? Yeah, yeah we'll let you. That's yeah. a public service. Uh, my name is Tom Sherman. I'm a physician with Core Physicians and also a resident of Rye. And I'm speaking today just to, I've spoken with our Vice President of um, Community Affairs at Exeter and also to our Chief Medical Officer and just bringing some uh, awareness to the Select Board that we are, uh, we have mobilized core for the Legionella outbreak and that we have our primary care team is available should you all have any questions, I'm happy to act as a liaison with the select board if that's useful. Um, but Melanie Lanier, who is our chief medical officer, said to be sure that you all are aware that we do have weekend hours over Labor Day for anybody who is a um, Hampton Health or with core physicians. Just to be sure that you all are aware that we're aware, our lab is mobilized, and if anybody has concerns, questions, or symptoms that mm -hmm. they want follow-up for, um, CORE is, is available to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none. We have the approval of, oh, we should have uh, announcements in the community calendar. There we go. Yes. <coughs> there has been some confusion uh, over the September 26th date. Originally, apparently, there was an effort made to, uh, for the Board of Selectmen to meet with uh, representatives of the state, but that is not set up at this time. And uh, at Marston School, 7 p.m. on the 26th of September, there will be a hearing on the bridge. So that's something that we all really uh, should participate in and uh, make sure we uh, make our our voices heard. So September 26th, Marston, 7 p.m. Regina? Any? I'm also at this time, Mr. Chairman. Jim? Yeah, I want to thank everybody that came out and voted. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a meeting since then, have we? No, we haven't. No. I want to thank everybody that came out and voted on, uh, for the uh, pipes. It was well attended and 
I mean, there could have been more people to come out, but most of the people who came out voted yes, so that that's good, and it went well. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to ta uh, thank Dr. Sherman for coming yes. in and uh, giving us that announcement. He also worked with the cancer cluster and I believe the water issues that have been going, and mm -hmm. he's also a candidate for state senator. Um, so thank him for coming in tonight. May I do a quick follow-up on what Jim said? Uh, I got a lot of feedback from the public when I was at the polls passing out the ballots on Friday, and one uh, individual suggested that we do robocalls for our town elections. I'm not sure how that would work, but I know a number of people told me they drove by on High Street and there was a lady out there holding a sign for a candidate for the primaries. But they saw her with the sign and they said, whoops, and they turned around and went back in and voted. So I don't know whether robo calls would be uh, appropriate, but it might be a way to get out the voters for the various town elections. All right. We have a consent agenda. There are some cemetery deeds. Minutes. Oh, sorry. The minutes from August 13th, so 2018. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, Fred. <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> okay, now the consent agenda. We have some cemetery deeds. We have the New Hampshire DES wetlands permit. We have a raffle permit. We have a release of a welfare dean, a lien. We have a request for no objection for uh, expansion of retail sales. We have a sidewalk sales vendor licenses. We also have, uh, that's been put on now, is the deputy health officers, the appointment of deputy health officers. Mr. So, Chairman? Yes. I'd like to pull, uh, I have no problem with the rest of it, but I'd like to pull number five. Uh, I have a problem with the brewery coming in for approval of this and approval of that, and I still see no signs that the pretreatment has been accomplished. And I don't want to see us go another four years without that. So if we can uh, remove number five from that consent agenda, I'll be happy to move it. Okay, have, have that to remove. I'll move. Move it, second it. Second, I just all those in it. favor? Oh, whatever. Five. So we'll bring up now. We'll bring up number five now. Release of, with no objection of finest kind brewery, LLC for expansion of retail sales. Mr. Town Manager. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my understanding is from discussing this matter with the Director of Public Works and the Deputy Director <clears throat> that um, finest kind has a temporary license to operate the facility, with very stringent uh, requirements that they cannot exceed certain. Uh, levels of discharge into the sewer system. They are currently contracting for a million dollar plus secondary treatment system which will be impl implemented within the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, at that time uh, they may apply for a full license once it's in, in and proven. Uh, until then this particular license requirement complies with the temporary license and the BOD and other requirements uh, that have been specified by the town and the state. Okay. Any other questions? So what, you, what you're saying is that they're currently abiding by all the rules that we've t asked them to abide by? That is correct. And the, and the DPW is happy with what, not happy, but satisfied with what's going on right now? I think not happy is a good statement. Uh, they are satisfied with what's going on and they're satisfied with their progress towards the completion of a mandatory pretreatment system. I make a motion that we approve it. Second. Any other discussion? I'm tired of waiting on this thing. Well, they have a temporary license until they have <clears throat> what until they're we... supposed to have as far as the treatment facility goes. Correct. Yes, they do. Okay. Another, now, another year, up. year and a half, whatever. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Four. I'm Four. opposed. One opposed. Okay. And next we have our appointments, and when I'm going I'm to go out of a little bit of order here because <coughs> right now we have, I'm going to bring up uh, John Nyan, the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce, along with our police chief. And the reason I'm doing this is because after that we're going to have the police chief give us some discussion on it. But we want to get through this one first. So, gentlemen, good evening. Um, 
At your last meeting, I know there was some concerns about the operational plans that we have for the Seafood Festival, particularly in the area of C Street and some of the impact it was going to have on a local business. Um, one of the things we do in the world we live in today, we have to look at things about potential acts of terror. And one of the things we try to do is limit access to certain areas using vehicles, some of them part of the event. So in the past, we have used the trash vehicles uh, kind of as blockers on some of the side streets. So a lot of the times, the Seafood Festival ha has to act in our direction as to where we want those things placed. Uh, it's not an issue where anybody wants it in front of their place of business, and that's understandable. Um, so my understanding is at the last meeting, there was an issue brought up uh, regarding uh, business on C Street. Uh, to address that, uh, I met with John, met with Rusty, went over some of the security issues, and we found an alternative plan. We do not like to discuss our operational plans in a public setting. I think that's pretty understandable as to why. We don't want to play our hand as the things we're doing trying to prevent anything from happening. What I can report to the board is that the plan that we have has removed uh, the trash vehicles from in front of that business or any vehicles in front of that business for the duration of the event. So with that, I think we've uh, satisfied the problem with the business owner. Um, and still met our security needs. So what I would ask the board to is uh, vote in favor of this change with those vehicles being removed. Any questions of the board? No. So he will be able to open for business on the Seafood Festival? I don't answer that. You'll have to ask the business owner. Right, I can say the issue that he raised about, about the accessibility and having the trash truck in that particular location, that will not occur. Okay, thank you. So there will be no impediment to the gentleman doing business? Correct. No, right. I make a motion that we approve. Second. All those in favor? Four, one abstention. That'll be me. Sure. Okay. Thank so you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank John? you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask uh, Fire Chief uh, to come up and also the Assistant Town Manager for this good. discussion. Thank you. So as you know, we've had a pretty busy weekend uh, dealing with some of the issues down at the beach, particularly the report of the cluster of Legionnaires disease. Um, we've been in uh, constant contact over the weekend with our partners with the state. We held an informational session for our business owners and the press uh, down at the police station this evening. So we just wanted to bring the residents up to, up to speed and you folks. I've been trying to keep you up to speed as things develop through the emails that I've been sending you. The issues that we're facing, uh, we are now at five confirmed cases uh, of Legionnaires oh. disease that originated within the town of Hampton, believed to be in that area along Ashworth Avenue from Island Path to H Street. So the process has begun to investigate and narrow that down to the specific area or location where this was generated. The truth be told, there's a possibility that we will never identify that specific location based on just as quickly as these things appear, they can go away. Uh, people have started being very attentive to cleaning up areas where they potentially could have these problems and create them. So a lot of things have already taken place by the individual business owners and people living in that area to try to mitigate that problem. So as we sit here today, uh, we, we are partnered up with representatives from DES and Department of Health and Human Services, and we're also receiving support from New Hampshire Homeland Security. So we are approaching this as an all hazards issue and we're bringing everybody to bear that can help identify this problem and try to take it away from our business owners so it's not impacting them but also removing the, the, uh, the health issues that it's obviously raised. Over the next several days, uh, I anticipate having uh, folks from the federal side of the house, the uh, Center for Disease Control out of Atlanta, Georgia are en route here. Uh, and timing up, setting up teams uh, comprised of federal, local, and state officials to go out and try to investigate and identify the source of this issue. So we're in process with that. Uh, it's going to be a, a little bit of a lengthy process. We're hoping we can get some more information to the public by the end of this week. Uh, that's not to say that any samplings we go out and take from, uh, from uh, properties in the town of Hampton probably aren't going to come back that quickly. But based on their, their technical expertise in this area, the folks from the CDC can hopefully narrow the areas down and give us some guidance on the measures we can take to prevent this from continuing or expanding. So with that, if there's any questions, we can try to inform you on. And I know the deputy, uh, the uh, 
deputy town manager has a couple of things to offer also. Any questions from the board? Mary Louise. Uh, actually, not a question, but when uh, prior to this meeting, uh, Mr. I know Mr. Bridal doesn't have his medical degree, but he enlightened me a little bit on the manner of becoming infected with this. Yes. And uh, I think that would be good. I didn't realize it. I think it would be good. I don't know, Chief, whether you would or Rusty, would you explain what, what you're explaining? Well, that, that could be a lengthy process because there's a lot of things that can happen and a lot of things that don't happen. So what I would offer is this. Um, on the town website and yeah. the police department website and the Department of uh, Health mm -hmm. website, there is a frequently asked questions brochure. Yeah. And I would refer you to that because there are just so many what ifs that okay. could we could address tonight. We'd be here for hours to talk he was about. talking about breathing in. Yeah, basically it is, it, you, you have to breathe that in. It's not gonna be, if you drink a glass of water that has the bacteria in it, yeah. that is not gonna be what contaminates you. It's something that has to be taken in. That's it, that's in that manner through water molecules and there's that. a variety of, of ways that that could happen mm -hmm. so informationally I would refer everybody to this mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be putting out more information as we develop it but we could be sitting here for hours talking about that okay but yep. I Chief, thought that was relevant do you think we could have maybe somebody from Concord one of the offices do a 10 minute story on channel 22 to allow us to give yeah. some questioning we, we we had that discussion with the folks that were down at the end of the meeting <coughs> today, um, and they seem very interested in that so we'll work out the details uh, mm -hmm. on that and, and I think that's a good point because to what mrs. Woolsey and you were saying yeah. let's be sure we get our information from the proper sources yeah. and Absolutely. the sources on yeah. this are going to be the health experts yeah. the DHHS and what they put out is very important that we we stay on that because these stories sometimes folks get a little off when they tell mm -hmm. the story so go I would recommend that we all as public officials as the chief has said mm -hmm. refer folks who have information they're seeking to those proper sites to the DHHS site to the CDC website for the official information and I, I think if we had them come in sometimes it's easier for people to understand if they hear somebody talking about it yeah. versus reading it on a piece yeah. of paper Agreed. so I think that would Rusty, yeah. I was oh, I wasn't oh, through yet okay. I have had one more um, for the chiefs I mentioned to both of you gentlemen police and fire chiefs that it was nice that we put that memo up on the uh, channel 22 it was very difficult to read could we please beg that when we have information like that to have a white background and black letters we, so that we don't well, that's have something we can bring up with channel 20 Ch channel 20 it's already been corrected it's yeah. been corrected okay I mean Jim. you mentioned that people should go to the experts and isn't there a health line too that they can call there is so that if anybody has any questions or any reservations about coming or here or something they really should go to the website and make the call and is that on the website? It's on the brochure that you see on the town website on, uh, uh, and the police department website. And if you go to the uh, Department of Health and Human Services website, it's also on there. Right. So people should be well aware there's no panic. There's no, it's get the information and make logical, intelligent Agreed. decisions. And the Health and Human Services folks and the subject matter experts are in town. They are working this problem methodically as they should. And just to further that because of the nature and, and who we are as a community being a tourist destination, they are working out of the police department uh, during this investigative phase. Mm -hmm. Both the state, federal, and local entities are all in the same room. The information is being shared, and we're doing this as expeditiously as we can, understanding the impact it's going to have on the community. Mm -hmm. Regina. I just want to reiterate, again, as another selectman saying it, what you guys have all been saying, that that frequently asked question sheet that you just referenced mm -hmm. is very informational. I know I referenced it a lot over the yep. weekend when I was getting questions and it pretty much relates everything to exactly what's going on in Hampton and then also the hotline number you can call because what I find is people like to assume things and you can't do that in this case because yeah. even the experts don't even know really what's going on yet. So I think everybody needs <coughs> to keep that in the back of their mind and if they have questions you either reference that or call the number. And we just ask for a little patience. I, I, we right. understand this has an impact on people but there's no reason to be panicked about right, this we're exactly. dealing with it we're on top of it we're working with our partners both state and federal and I'm confident we're going to get through this with a positive result I think the manager has in front of you that document that was in the consent agenda just so you understand what that is is we we in Hampton have one health officer uh, what those forms are is to appoint recommended three other folks to be deputy health officers to help Kevin in this process 
to work with our, our state and federal partners, it's important that they be appropriately appointed by the state, and that's what the form before you is. So we'd ask you to mm -hmm. sign that today, and we'll, we'll make that happen tomorrow. <clears throat> Do we have to make a motion and vote on that? You did it on the consent did. agenda. You're fine. Okay. But agenda. just, just yeah. informationally so you understand what that is. Jim, I mean, uh, Rick, do you have any questions? No. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank Thanks you. for keeping us informed. Thank us for all the updates. Uh, we really continue. appreciate it. And the citizens appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you because you've done a great job on keeping this yeah, whole thing rolling. Yeah, we're trying to keep the, the, the hysteria to a dull roar and trying mm -hmm. to keep people informed so they get accurate information. So we'll keep those coming to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Christy Pulliam. Finance Director, monthly update. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Should be three. All right. So tonight we have the July financials. Um, everyone should have received them, I think, like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks back. It's the seventh report of 2018. The target is 58.4%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 2017 to 2018. The 2018 revenue is greater than 2017 by $117,091. Motor vehicle income came in over by $84,196. Building permits are under 2017 by 46509 Highway subsidy is under 2017 by 168439 That's related to the additional money that was distributed in 17 from the state. <coughs> Parking tickets is over 2017 by 15422 Sledge is under 2017 by 24,563. Parking lot income is over 2017 by $31,013. And the real estate trust is over 2017 by $25,820. The total month's income was $841,950. Of that, motor vehicles came in at $295,576. Interest on taxes at 13,846, building permits at 23,238, highway subsidy at 95,929, departmental income at 68,560, rice sewer at 21,782, parking lot income at $188,008 and the real estate trust at $115,448. On the expense side, you will find that we are 59.9% spent or over budget by $369,994 or 1.5%. In July of 17, we were under budget by $516,448 or 2.09%. Although this may be concerning, I remind everyone that we are on a default budget year. Also, this summer is underway now, so this does make sense and I will continue to monitor. Um, as we go along. Legal is at 60.79%. The main contributing factor here is outside council fees. Personnel administration is at 59.07. Cemetery is at 62.56%. Municipal insurance is at 59.13%. Other general government parking lots is at 86.97%. Emergency management is at 77%. And I just noted there that people should know that we do get money from the EOC on a quarterly basis that does show up on the revenue side of things. So even when this line is spent or overspent, there is income coming in to offset that. Other service hydrants is at 104.62%. Th this reflects the second hydrant bill coming in. So now that is expended for the year. In Public Works, Highways and Streets is at 60.9% 60, 60 when you include the open purchase orders. Uh, let's see. And then uh, Library is at 66.3%. That's related to the timing of the third quarter payment being issued prior to these financials going out. And seven, on page 17 and 18, you'll just see that the, all the Warren articles are all underway and being uh, spent and worked on. Fund 24, the recreation, has a balance of $203,428. Fund 
Fund 25, the cable committee has 342,388. I do note there that our, we do have the second yeah. half payment of the studio upstairs waiting to be issued. So that will knock that down by like, I think another 133,000 will come off of that by the time I probably do the August financials. Fund 26, private detail has, has 157,426. Fund 27 EMS has a balance of 369,404. And the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2018 total $27,581 with a balance of $210,885. And board approved projects of 100, or expenditures, not projects, of 117,676. So that would address that balance to 93,209 in the wastewater system development charge account. And that is it for the July financials. They are on the website and mm -hmm. were emailed out to the budget committee and yourselves. So. Are Louise, any questions? No, thank you. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. You're welcome. So I know we're just about, well, that was July, so Correct. we're almost through the summer. So we'll probably slow down a little bit <laughs> yes. after July. Um, there's just a couple. One, I think legal. Yes. I noticed the outside council is yes. at 92%. Yeah, they've expended $27,668.74 <laughs> on that line to date. That's through uh, last week's payables. Okay, so I think maybe we should just uh, keep an eye on that one. I know you are, but yes. you know we still have quite a bit of the year to go through. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Jim? So, revenue's up. Revenue's up. Spending's up. Spending's up. <laughs> all right, so... And spending's over what it was last year? At this time, yes. At this time. So yes. uh, are, we, are we worried about that? or? Uh, I'm not worried yet. Okay. No. And I do lose sleep eventually. So does Fred. Okay. So we're not worried yet. You have to remember that there was a lot of um, charges in related to the Church Street Force Main being put up and run into action and um, a lot of emergency things that have come up throughout the year. But I think it will all balance out once we get through the season. Okay. So if we're this way at the end of September, then I might start to be a little concerned, and we'll, I'm sure Fred will make some decisions in regards to spending. But at this point, I don't think there's any need to be alarmed yet. Okay. All right. And, and you mentioned parking tickets are up? Parking tickets are up, yes. Okay. Because I saw an That's email I thought. Parking enforcement officers. Yeah, I, thought, I saw an email I thought that somebody said that they didn't see people down there issuing parking tickets and I live right across the street and oh. I see them all the time they're, they're doing there. a great <laughs> they're job they're issuing them. Yeah. yeah they're doing a great job from the people who come in I think they're being issued but I don't know for sure but yeah, yeah I know there's a I think there's at least I think they have three strictly parking enforcement officers right. at, that I can think of down there this year and, and you said the the cable fund is pretty big but that's still has to be yeah there's a hundred and thirty thousand dollar check sitting upstairs waiting to be issued so that will knock that down considerably as soon as that check goes out super Thank you very much. Rick? <clears throat> and uh, how, what about the parking for the town parking lots? How is, is that up? Or? It was up when I did these financials uh, by, let's see here, parking lots were up 31,000 from where they were in 2017. That has dropped a little bit because I did look as of today and we're up about 10,000 mm -hmm. over last year as of like through the 26th. Thank so you. last week was a very... Weather-wise, killed them down there for sure. Mm -hmm. The two deposits that came in last week were very small from parking lots, but today was better when it came in after the weekend. And with the next couple of really warm days, I'm sure that's going to go right up. So, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's one of those things that's definitely weather-generated. Correct. So. We noticed that, especially now that we there's new um, processes in place and they bring the money up to finance to be deposited and stuff. And um, last week, both the deposits were like, oh, they were very small, so <laughs> compared to what we had seen for the rest of the so far this year, so. All right. And then Thank the other thing much. that was on the agenda was just to uh, let the board know that the um, bids went out for the audit and they have come back in, and we would like to award the bid to uh, Plodzik and Sanderson. It's for three years for twenty-eight thousand per year. That includes the. Um, two thousand dollars if a single audit is needed a single audit is needed whenever the town receives federal uh, funding that exceeds seven hundred and fifty thousand we haven't had one for the last um, at least not this past year for sure and I don't think we did the year before but we will have them going forward especially with SRF money that is going to be coming in for these projects and stuff so 
it's not a bid waiver, but we just did, did bring it before the board um, for your approval. So also move, Mr. Chairman. Uh -oh. We have a motion and okay. a second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Great. There you go. Before Christy le leaves, I just want to make a mention that her son, Nick, worked in the with the cable crew this, this summer. And our reports are that he did an absolutely super job that he's really, so he follows in his mother's footsteps, obviously. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Could I say something? I want to thank Christy for all the work he did, making sure all that information got out on the website this weekend oh. and working yeah. with yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Next, we will have Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor. Good evening. Good evening, Ed. I'm here this evening for two items. Uh, the first being an abatement that's relative to uh, the sewer placement, uh, the easement that was granted um, or on 77 Time Mill Road. Um, no abatement in dollars, just a discontinuation of the pilot that they paid every year. Uh, so that's that one. Just need a, a motion, I guess, and signature. We'll make a order. motion that we approve that. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Um, second is this time of year for the MS ones. Um, three MS one reports were given to the board. Um, also a cover sheet um, explaining the changes from last year to this year. Um, taxable income or taxable valuation increased about nine tenths of one percent or approximately thirty million dollars um, a few other things the precinct went up a little bit not a lot um, exemptions though exemptions went down actually this year by about four percent or a million and a half dollars um, and a little increase in exempt properties uh, a lot to do with the school addition and a few other things that have taken place um, so the MS1 this year, the, the, the taxable value for tax rate setting purposes is three billion three hundred and fifty-seven thousand or million twenty-eight thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, the, uh, the precinct ones, of course, are uh, parts of that, that that deal with the precinct values. Uh, those again were total precinct value uh, about seven hundred eighty-two million dollars. Any questions for Ed? Ed, so that, that's the total value of all the taxable property in Hampton? Um, less the elderly or the, okay, exemptions, the exemptions and less the exemptions. So okay. taxable would be uh, about three, three point, f just a little over $3.4 billion. $3.4 billion. Before, okay. before exemptions were yeah. reduced. Okay. It. Yep. So do we have a motion to... And I have just, just one page that needs signatures. Yep. I make that motion. Yep. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. It? Yep. That's it. Ed, I want to thank you for all your work that you've done for this town. Mm. Uh, I appreciate it. You, you've it's been, been a pleasure. A, a long time, and we know you've uh, going on to greener pastures, I guess, or whatever uh, you want to call it. But we, maybe. <laughs> we do appreciate what you've Hopefully. done for this town. Uh, at, I at appreciate it. I do everything. as one, one member of this board. You've always been pretty fair and accurate, and uh, I, I appreciate that. I'll back that up. I agree 100%. Yeah, I'll agree. I agree. Thanks. You want to confirm for the public Ed's uh, leaving date? Ed will be leaving as of the 31st, 31st. 31st of this month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So this will be his last meeting with us, and all the best wishes of this yes, town. And, and uh, Okay. Well, I appreciate everything. everything. It's been, yep. been a good nine years. I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate everything. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, take care. Next one is Jen Hale, DPW Deputy Director. Oh, yes. Good evening. Good, Good evening, evening everyone. I uh, want to start off, say thank you to all of you, and thank you to everybody in town who came out to vote. Uh, that yes. was... Uh, quite the relief and uh, made for a great uh, Friday night to hear that uh, we are replacing these force main pipes um, out of the marsh and into the roadway. Uh, and that is my segue for part of why I'm here tonight. Um, with that vote and approval comes all the next steps. Um, as we've mentioned before, this is a project that will go out for uh, the SRF loan. Uh, so I am going to be requesting tonight authority from this board uh, for the town manager uh, to execute all the documents that are needed in order to submit that paperwork. Um, and that's sort of step one. Step 
Two is also to authorize Wright Pierce under their construction administration contract. Uh, they have provided uh, for us and in the form that the state requires for the SRF loan package, um, their construction administration services. So this is for all the bid documents that have already gone out. This is their on-site full-time uh, project representative uh, during construction. This will be all the construction meetings, all the coordination with the contractor. Uh, their total contract is for um, $357,000. Uh, that money was included in the Warren article. Uh, and again, I'm asking the board to uh, authorize the town manager to execute that contract. Uh, as many of you know, Wright Pierce has been part of this project from day one. Yeah. Um, this contract doesn't need a waiver uh, they, as they were selected as part of the RFQ process uh, within the last three years. Um, that being said, um, they need this board's approval because the state also has to approve their contract. I'll make that motion. I'll we'll second it. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. And then I'm going to step back one and maybe do the vote to authorize uh, town manager to submit the loan documents. Uh, to execute all the loan documents as well. Motion by Regina, seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Third part of this one is that, as you all know, uh, we put the project out to bid. Uh, we had two bidders. Uh, the lowest of those bids, uh, Rivoli Contracting out of Franklin, Massachusetts. Uh, again, looking tonight for you to authorize Fred uh, to execute their notice of award. Um, it comes in different steps. It's a potential notice of award. It goes to the state. The state agrees at first, then it comes back. Then we actually do a notice of award, and at that point is the actual contract that is signed. So you need a potential notice of award. I need basically both uh, to okay. authorize. Both. Um, yeah. All right. <coughs> Motion by Regina, seconded by Jim. All those in so favor? this is to allow the manager to. To, to go into contract with right. to, to get the. So right. all those in favor? Unanimous. And for that and the reason I'm here doing all these at once is because we can get going uh, and not have to wait the next two weeks for another meeting, get all this paperwork uh, started. What's the anticipated? So the anticipated way this will work is that we figure it will take the state about uh, a week or so to us to get all the documents to them, them to get all the documents back to us. It will take us very short time to turn around our documents. Wow. We'll give the notice of award uh, to Roley they have then I believe it's five days under contract uh, to get us their um, uh, performance bond, basically. That takes some time on their part. But with that being said, the way the contract was written was that substantial completion is 230 days. So upon that notice to proceed, so it's notice to award, goes under contract, then we give the notice to perceive once we have the performance bond in hand. Uh, with that notice perceived, they'll have 230 days from that date. If that's within the next, you know, two and a half, three weeks, that puts you at an end of April, early May. Um, obviously, it all depends on when that notice proceeds. set. So, again, why I'm here trying to get all the documents going. All right. Uh, may I? I yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm sure you've answered this before, but then the old pipes, what happened? They just capped them? We will cap them. We will we'll first flush them, and then we will cap them. Uh, on both ends. Okay, thank you. Uh, you go, Mary. go ahead, Mary Louise. Yeah. As long as we have you here, and thank you, because you really have had a load on your shoulders. But I talked to a lot of voters, and, and it was very encouraging to see the voters come out last Friday. And they were supportive of the article to go ahead and do the sewer pipes. But Many of them said to me, when am I going to get sewer in my neighborhood? And I think that's a serious question. And as I look at what's happening with the planning board. Uh, a discussion for another time. No, we're this is. We're talking about another board. I mean, we're not talking about. No, we're talking we're about talking sewers. We're development here. We're talking about the pipes in the we're, marsh. We're talking about sewers here. Yeah, we're talking about the pipes in the marsh. Sewers, longtime residents in this community who have, do not have access to sewer. And I'm one of those, and I, I, I can totally agree with you, but we, 
we do need to talk about that at, at some point and we will as some of these projects come up like the one that's going on on Mary Bachelor okay. and it so, needs to be right. put on the agenda yeah, correct but so no, also I on here we have the Anne's Lane sewer line replacement discussion so this uh, item here I mean I guess it's a segue I mean Anne's Lane is has a sewer line uh, it is an old clay sewer line it needs to be replaced uh, it has been needed to be replaced for years now um, probably since I've gotten here so this is my going into my fourth year and I say that because each year that we've tried to replace it our funding sort of disappears due to <laughs> some other form of emergency uh, this year is no exception my entire sewer line as I'm sure Christy uh, pointed out just a few minutes ago you know it's basically 76 percent spent but 110,000 of that 170 was on the first repair we made mm -hmm. to the force mains in the marsh um, if you look within our budgets and I'm going to hand this out for you guys just to have uh, a copy just to follow sort of along what I've done in here is we put Anne's Lane uh, out to bid and knowing full well that this was not in a Warren article but it is infrastructure that needs to be approved oh, yeah. and we have told many people in town you know the way that the director and I feel along with our foreman is that we can't just pave over the roads if the stuff underneath it is falling apart it doesn't do us any good yeah, right. to just put the band-aid on top so Anne's Lane bid went out it came in one bidder even though I had I believe seven show up to the pre-bid conference uh, and the bid came in uh, it w within our construction estimate the problem is is how do you fund it so what you have in front of you is basically I took the entire bid that we received and I broke it up into the components of this sewer project there is a bunch of paving work there is a bunch of sewer work and there is uh, drainage work mm -hmm. uh, to get yeah. that entire road basically up to what I'm going to call today's standards from Lafayette Road to Mill Road the ultimate problem is that under the uh, Warren article Warren article 14 that was passed um, that provides us for the paving uh, money and just to read it it allows for us to do uh, paving overlays adjustments to structures to permit paving repairs and replacement to drainage repairs to sidewalks driveway openings crack ceiling pavement basically things that make a road better mm -hmm. unfortunately I can't use that money on the sewer component of this project and you'll see that it's two hundred and three thousand dollars I've gone through the budget and you can see if you flip the pages yep. I think it's green or yellow you know of lines that I know that aren't going to get spent this year I mean I, I I don't have time to do a side rock project nor is there enough money in that line uh, and we fully admit it we're not going to sit there and try to just spend the money um, when it's not going to give us the product that we want I've sat there and said well if I was able to receive permission for the board to take it out of my budget not necessarily the line item for line item mm -hmm. could we afford to do the Anslane project and the answer is I don't have a crystal ball and I know that's not really a good answer because right now yes I think we could do it but I would not be forthright with this board or myself if I said well there could be nothing that uh, screws that up we've all witnessed what screws up our budget <laughs> uh, meaning repairs fixes I mean and the fact that I still have snow season to go to so you never know what happens between you know October and December that's all part of this budget um, I don't have it I have plenty of money to do all this within the budget and using that Warren article I guess I'm here one to explain that to you and for any of the public that's watching uh, why how come Anne's Lane hasn't been done yet how come you haven't done the yes. sewer you know why aren't you guys paving Anne's Lane it's we've been talking about it for three years this is the reason so I may be looking for some guidance or some direction you know I heard Christy say we're slightly over but she's not worried from a town mm -hmm. whole mm -hmm. uh, DPW is under target at the moment we definitely have some line items and for us to be under target and to have spent 110 on the force main repair and then if you look on that one page that I highlighted in orange two hundred and ten thousand dollars you know of money that we have 
expended to put the or encumbered in the POs uh, to put the temporary pipe in you know we've spent a lot out of our budget to date and still are under um, I did speak with Christy today because we are applying for the loan and because the warrant did pass that temporary pipe money that two hundred and ten thousand dollars will come back into our budget um, as long as it gets processed this year which it would because we'll be under contract and needing to pay the contractor so there is definitely the potential that there's enough money in our budget overall and it's not line item by line item but overall to be able to do the full project uh, but I bring it to you asking if that's a route you want us to go or questions it's just some information I'd like to ask Fred what he has to say it works as long as we don't have another emergency mm -hmm. if we have another emergency you're going to overdraw the public works budget now that's okay as long as we have it in the bottom line and I think we will have so I mean Jen's being very conservative uh, she's trying to balance what we need to do in order to move forward with the repairs that we need to make in order to make that road whole mm -hmm. if without doing this we fall a year behind we have several projects already on the drawing boards for years ahead we're going to have to move all those further out uh, which means they're all going to cost more money in the long run so what are you advising the board well Jen's saying we can make it we can make it um, gosh if we if we don't have a major problem and I don't think there's anything else we can break that we haven't already broken <laughs> somebody um, knock on wood please <laughs> you know it's it's just one of those things I think we I think we can make it they're, they're very stingy on how they do this they're they're very management wise uh, I'd go ahead and let it be done okay, my, my, do we need a well let's have come talk about it first my my yeah. my thing is we've been telling people for at least six or eight years yeah Anne's Lane's top priority Anne Lane top priority mm -hmm. yeah we hear time and time again it's the worst road in town we hear that I agree with you we didn't need to patch just patch over an, a problem that we weren't fixing so um, I'll make the motion well let's have this anybody else wants to speak yeah am I reading this right Jen um, it says Anne's Lane improvements and the bid total is four hundred and fifty three thousand four hundred and ten is that the approximate that is the bid amount that did come in uh, Jamco was the only bidder uh, that is uh, what I am calling the total bid in that bid there is thirty five thousand okay. dollars that is for police details right uh, so I have a net bid that brings it down to four hundred and you know less than fifty and in working with PD and maybe some of their detail accounts and my own detail account lines oh, you know there these are the ways that because Fred said, I mean, we're, we're just going to take it and we're going to try to use every bit of what we have to make it happen. Existing residents who need help, and this isn't the only street in town that needs help, but the sewer part is certainly critical. We need to be fulfilling our obligation to the existing residents of town instead of allowing these huge developments to come in and suck up well, town is, services. We're talking we're about no, sewer on Anne's I'm Lane. talking right. about sewer we're not on Anne's about Lane that keeps getting kicked down the road. And the planning make board. A motion that we go the, with I'm what trying you to said. speak, if yeah, you don't mind. Well, and the planning. Let's speak about let's keep, let's let's on the keep agenda. It about and the planning board's reaction well, is we're not raise talking the about taxes. The planning board, well, we are because the planning board is getting us into trouble as well. Mary rule your beam out of order. This is a desperate project that needs to be done Thank for you. this neighborhood. Regina. I'll second Rick's motion, but I just want to say that public works, I'm pretty much at the point right now where you guys, I know you have a great budget. You're also on a default budget this year mm -hmm. and you're still yeah. underspent spent with all the stuff you've had to put up with. Yeah. You've already talked to finance. You've already talked to town management. I am totally fine so that you can do Ains Lane so and finish it the way it should be. Anybody Got else to want to speak? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. So with that, I will need to come back to you in two weeks unless we want to do it now. I just didn't prepare the paperwork for you. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be to authorize Jamco uh, for their bid with a waiver as I did not receive three bids. Uh -huh. uh, so I would need the board to vote on the waiver, and it is for that 453000 And how many proposals did you put out? Uh, we sent it to over 12. 
I had five show up at the pre-construction and we only received one bid. Mm -hmm. i make a motion. Make that waiting. motion to, yes. to allow. Yes. No sense in having her come back. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. <clears throat> Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Jen, for all you do. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to add something to what Jen said. <clears throat> We're to the point where the streets that need to be paved at this point, if we pave them, we'd be digging them up in a couple of years. Oh, I totally agree It doesn't make a lot of it. sense. Absolutely. That's so why we... We and, need to move forward with this. And, and we need to look at when we're doing our, more, our budgeting is to put more money into sewers yep. because we can't pave until we make sure that the stuff under the ground is, right. yep. is correct. I, Mr. Chairman, I want to make sure I'm understanding Mr. Welch. You mean because of the deteriorating sewer lines under the roads? We have, de we have a case of two, two situations where we have deteriorating roads and deteriorating sewer lines. Right. <clears throat> the we have paved almost all of the roads on the, on the want list by age and and uh, condition that we can pave without having to pave them and then dig them up to replace the sewer in the next few years. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't make any sense to me. We pave a road; the road is supposed to last for between 15 and 20 years with proper maintenance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a lot of sense for me to to, to for instance. Uh, this particular street, if we were to pave this and not replace the sewer, right. we would be paying double or triple in the next few years right. to do the work Absolutely. over again. And we're all tired of potholes. <clears throat> and pot humps. And I'll leave this again. <laughs> this is the one page um, that the whole board has to sign for yeah. the CF loan. Um, okay. Yes, our loan, the rest of yeah. can. Uh, thank you, Jen. All right. Jen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. The next person up will be Jane Ryan. Good evening. Hello. Did you get my emails? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, we've never had a problem with parking until this year. Okay. I guess there was a complaint from Make somebody. sure you speak a little bit louder because we want people to hear you. I guess there was a complaint. This summer, I had um, tenants there for a month. The first two weeks were fine. The second, third weekend, she, uh, she went to Preston Real Estate. They called me, and I'm like, we've never had a problem. Um, then they parked on the other side of Bittersweet Lane. They, the, the policeman came and said there's no parking on the street at all. It's a dead-end street. The fire lane, I, I messed up the north and the south. The fire lane's on the, my side, which is the north side, and <coughs> the other side is where we would park. I don't have a driveway. Mm -hmm. And all the other houses on the street have driveways. And um, one of the ladies was putting cones out, and they weren't parking in their yards. They were parking on the side. And so I went to Home Depot and I bought two cones <laughs> and put 12 Bittersweet Lane and said to the woman, I just need one spot for my tenant. And I don't care if friends, family come, they have to find parking elsewhere. And you know, it was agreed, okay. Um, and then this woman went to Preston, she got a $30 ticket. And I'm like, okay, leave it on the table, I'll take care of it. But, I mean, we've owned the place for 19 years, and we've never had an issue, and I don't know if there is an issue. Um, I know after that, they said cars parked on the street, and nobody bothered them. So, hmm. and then my sister was here Saturday, and the cars were out of the driveway on the streets, and nobody's bothering them. I don't know why this woman was ticketed. She did what I asked her to do. I left a note on the table saying you have one spot on the side of the road. So I don't know if somebody changed the laws and we're not aware of it. My husband's disabled. They moved the parking from our side over. They put up the fire lane, which is fine. But um, now there's, I guess, supposedly no parking on the dead end, which doesn't make sense because it is a dead end street. Well, there should be no parking on one side right. because it's narrow. Fire lane. Right. Fire lane. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The other side should be allowed parking. Yeah. Period. There's just no question about it. Now, this ordinance apparently is quite, quite old 
it goes back into ancient history. But <laughs> somebody put a sign up, and that's what started all this. Did, did we put a sign up? I don't believe we did. Hmm. There's now a part, you know, like a P with a slash through it on the telephone pole. I don't know who put that there. I don't know how long it's been there. I just noticed it. Well, we wouldn't, I don't believe we'd usually put signs on telephone poles. Usually we put them Isn't on their own. Is it on the telephone pole? Well, yeah. as I'm know. saying, the town usually puts up a post when they put the signs up. They right. usually don't put them on. Yeah. It's not the normal for us to put it on a pole. No, in and fact, it's against the law to put it on the pole. So could we have that sign removed? Oh, sure. Just tell yeah. me to do it. And nobody's supposed to be putting those cones, cones in the up. yard. Right. You're entitled to park in front of their house. Right. Well, it was never a problem. I know, like, you know, around the 4th of July, that's a really busy week, but my daughter's there with her husband and we've just never had an issue it just yeah. seems like this year well it doesn't really reason. matter the thing is those people are not supposed to put a cone so yeah. who's supposed to take the cones away if we see the cones then the public works department yeah. or the police department is authorized to remove them so they you need to call mine. the police yeah. or the or the town and ask them to come and remove them you're right. entitled to park in front of those people's house mm -hmm. that's not their parking and uh, this is happening all over town. Yes. It's really ridiculous. It's People are putting big stones in front of their yards, and yeah. I think it's time that something be done about it. We I, pick them up periodically. Yeah, it's happening all the time, Fred. I you know, right. but why would but we the don't have patrol cars put to do a it? ticket on? Because you got if you park in a fire zone. It wasn't the fire zone. It was on the other side of the street. The so, fire zone is on my side. Have you have you paid the ticket yet? I contested it. You contested it. It wasn't on do? my vehicle. It was but, from and, Connecticut. And did they, they I'm correct not it? sure because um, it was maybe two weeks ago. I just wrote on the well, paperwork. Well, you should follow up. Follow up through with the police chief. Ask, right. right. That follow up with the police Explain chief. to them what happened. Yeah. There's someone there at the police station that you can talk to. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are allowed to park there. Uh, and these people with these cones is ridiculous. I would ret uh, call each time the police department and the town and right. say at yeah. the DPW. But I'm not sure that the police, because they did come. They came and um, she got the ticket. So I don't yeah. know. Well, it doesn't well, that's, matter. That's you need why to do somebody called. About it. Someone's so, gonna, you're going to have to do something. Somebody sure called. So I, my of. suggestion to you is to appeal it. And call the police chief and talk to the police chief and let him know what's going on. And uh, why don't you have a, uh, a driveway at your house? Well, I don't <laughs> know. You we bought it off put, some people. There's you a have to put one in. It's an old house. In Everybody's back supposed for a to. Yeah. Car. And we put all kinds of fencing in, and then we just barely put a new fence in the back. And then I'm like, what do you mean there's no parking after we've spent this money? But it's, like I said, it's never been an issue. Well, you really are supposed to have a parking space I on have your a little property. spot in the back. It's not a driveway. It's just like Well, can you drive in there? A, like a small compact car, Well, that's yes. what you need to t have your tenants park. And then besides right. that, they're entitled to park on the street right. if it's an empty spot. Correct. Right. But nobody's supposed to have Nobody's supposed to be saving spots. Saving right. spots. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's got, and I think people are just getting small. I mean, when you're not parking in your driveway and you're parking on the street. Yeah. That happens along. It's over. happening yeah, everywhere, and it's not like right. It's, yeah, it really is. So, you know, you should, uh, you know, people, get your car out there. It, Evidently, it's what you're going to have to do. I went to the beach and came back and said, oh, I hope I don't have, <laughs> I I don't have So, but I would call. say the first place is to, we will have, we will, we will instruct the public works guy and take that sign down if it is there. And we will have, uh, I would suggest, like I said, get, get a hold of the police chief. Yep. Ask, talk mm -hmm. to him, explain him the situation, yeah. tell him you were here at the board and explain that and uh, yeah. go okay. from there. Thank yeah, you. Because you shouldn't have to pay for that ticket. No. Well. I hope they didn't do something to the woman from Connecticut because it well, was her ticket. I no, just they went still should. They wrote still. on it. And you I, and they, you know, they need to know that you are allowed to park in that space. So great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hope that helps. I hope so. Thank you, Chris Munns, candidate night discussion. There are a lot of problems like that at the beach. With there are a lot of, that, and that's and that's an age-old problem. The on small the beach roads parking. and the old roads. Yeah. yeah. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Good evening. Um, I'm here tonight in my capacity as the uh, chair of the Hampton Town Democratic Committee. 
For the past 10 years, um, the Hampton Democrats and the Hampton Republicans have asked the town to support having a televised debate between our candidates mm -hmm. for state representative, state senator, and executive council. And um, we'd like to do that again this fall and um, pick a date for that. Um, what we'd also like to try to do this year, if we can get the candidates to be interested or, or be available, is to actually see if we could get the, the two, two or three, however many final candidates there are for governor and um, uh, Congress uh, person in the first district Good. to come and have a separate discussion and televise that on channel 22. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at possibly um, trying to do something in October, um, looking at three possible dates, October 18th, October 25th, and uh, November 1st. Uh, obviously, that assumes that there's nothing else scheduled. But um, looking, I think, for two nights, uh, we do the state reps, the state senator, and the executive council one night, and then maybe the governor and the, the, the uh, congressional race the second night. It's looking, just How looking do you for your a, a time that's agreeable to everybody. <laughs> well, so well, what we do, what, what what we would do, it's really what I've learned over the years is rather than asking people when they're available, we find out when um, it's available on Channel 22, and then we we set that date and tell people, if you want to be on TV, you have to show up yeah. that night. Yeah, mm -hmm. 7 o'clock at night is pretty customary. What do you suggest, Fred? We do it every election. So, so I yeah. What date, though? Oh, I don't think it makes any difference to me, as long as you can get them scheduled. Yeah, yeah I think what I, what, you know, what I would like to do is... Um, with your permit, with your support, is we'll just work with Channel 22. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Find a night, find a couple nights that work. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, find a couple blocks of time that would work, um, and then we'll we'll say that that's the night it's going to be, and we'll let the candidates know. And um, I'm hoping I have not heard from Bob Casaza, but he's always been very willing to serve as a moderator. Mm -hmm. And I know we've got some people from the press that are interested, um, and we just we'll, we'll set it up and. You know, hopefully people will show up. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we allow Chris to communicate with Channel 22, <coughs> and that's certainly in the public interest to set up a date for the candidates. And that's for both sides. Yes. It would be it would be whoever whoever's on the final ballot after the primary. So, yep. you know, for example, if they're if it's if it's just Republican and Democratic candidates, they would be there. If there's going to be a Libertarian candidate or somebody else on the ballot, mm -hmm. they would certainly be able to participate as well. Good. Yeah, I just want to make a couple of comments. Uh, we have a two channels. One is government, one's education, and one's public. We have three, cha three channels. We don't have a third channel. Okay. We've recently had a request from a group who wanted to come in and do a one, one, a one, or one and a half hour program mm -hmm. that was denied because it was not a government function. Right. Now, I think we have to make it very clear that we're doing this, if we are doing it, because it is a government function, because it's people that are running mm -hmm. for that, that are going to represent yeah. us, and right. that we're not, it's not one right. group it's a bipartisan. presenting right. their right. point of view, but it's both sides discussing mm -hmm. their point of view. Yeah, so right. I want to make that very clear that that's what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Good. Yeah. Regina? I agree with everything you like. Great idea, and Thanks. I really hope that you can do the... CD1 district and also the governor. That would be really awesome. Okay. Do so I have a second? She have a motion, a second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. You Thank go. you. That was Thank hard you. work, Chris. <laughs> Nancy Stiles, I see you just walked in. Just walked in. Perfect timing. Hampton Beach Area Commission update. Thank you. Good evening, Nancy. Good evening. I apologize for flying in. Got hung up on <laughs> construction in Portsmouth. I'd like to thank Rick for keeping you guys current on what's been going on with the Hampton Beach Area Commission, but I figured since we had our votes last week that, it, that I should come in and, and share with you. So after four years of uh, planning with safety and um, public comment, HBAC <coughs> has finalized its draft um, language to update the Hampton Beach Master Plan uh, in the area of transportation. I did hear from... Um, consultant today and we're working on that final language because I want to just make sure that all of the votes we took 34 votes uh, at the last meeting and I just want to make sure that they're all included in that plan <coughs> um, when the final um, 
approved draft is ready, I will make sure that you each get a copy. Either Rick or I will uh, take care of that. And then we will go before the planning board. And we're hoping to have that happen by the third week in September. Uh, yeah. Get this through the process as, as quickly as we can. But I'll give you a topical view of what the final uh, votes were. Uh, so you know, uh, <clears throat> we, first of all, we will maintain two lanes of traffic, uh, south on Ashworth, north on um, Ocean Boulevard. Maintain bicycle lanes, appropriate width of sidewalks, the whole corridor. Um, address the drainage problems. Yes. Um, uh, and um, highlight the crosswalks at all crossings. Good. Because that's a, that's a big issue. And in line with that, uh, maintain the temporary barricades that um, Chief Sawyer had um, put up, which really does control uh, the pedestrians and makes them cross at crosswalks, Good. which gives the people driving through a much more assured feel that someone's not going to step out mm -hmm. into the traffic. Um, and maintain those all the way up to uh, Mrs. Mitchell's store. Uh, maintain the center parking from Ashworth to Ocean Boulevard, uh, which would include uh, heightening the guardrails, because a lot of people currently step over those guardrails uh, and step out into traffic. Yeah, and so yeah, we good. talked about making sure they were high enough so that people could not step over yeah. them. Um, also to limit some of the entrances and exits so you don't have people weaving in and weaving out quite as much or someone shooting down the middle. Um, and to improve the crosswalk access. North of Boar's Head, um, they w we opted to reduce the lanes to three lanes, one south, one north, and a center turning lane. <clears throat> Locate all of the parking in that area on the east mm -hmm. because there's a, a seawall there and you can't see over it anyway, so you may as well have the cars up against the seawall as uh, you're not blocking anybody's mm -hmm. view. Yeah. Um, address the elevation. If you re remember, there's an elevation differential right there at the uh, uh, end of Winnicott Road, mm -hmm. so that we need to figure, they, they need to figure out a way to uh, address that so that um, we can have the parking over there and people can also access the beach. Um, and ask them to consider a limited toilet facility at the juncture of Winneconnet and um, Route 1A. Hmm. Uh, hopefully not to block anyone's view, yeah. but it would be a halfway point from the high street bathrooms and the yeah. ones down by the shell. Um, we had many discussions and some things were not, as far as we were concerned, were very clear. But because of some of the confusion that was going on, um, were not really put into votes, but I feel, and Rick, you can correct me if you want, um, that the discussion was very clear that no major reconstruction uh, in the Hampton River Bridge section until the termination of the br br new bridge is known. Uh, it was very difficult to put that into language. There was mm -hmm. a question about what is major construction, what if the town wants us to do something, and so we just left that as a discussion, but a comment to be considered. Uh, also to provide be, provide tr turning lanes into the state park, both going south and going mm -hmm. north, to get the traffic off of Route 1A and into the park. Yeah. Uh, to maintain the queuing lane for the uh, uh, trucks hauling boats to go into the pier, to go down into the pier. Mm -hmm. At one point there was discussion about putting that out into the uh, regular driving lane. And uh, then there was another thought of maybe having them come in across from the state park. That's too short a turn. Want to get those boats and the trucks off of the uh, driving lanes and into a queuing lane so that they can get into the um, pier safely. Um, and HBAC was opposed to the jug handle uh, that was proposed. I don't know if how many of you remember see, uh, went to those public mm -hmm. hearings, yeah. but they talked about putting the jug handle on to make that turn in, onto um, Church Street. And another issue is coming into the beach too, and um, I really need to talk with um, perhaps either Chief Sawyer or someone at the Ashworth because you really can't see it. When they park the big vehicles there, uh, the, 
um, you know, the, the big ones. <laughs> right now, they, you can't see to make that turn. So we're going to talk to them about not allowing parking of those big vehicles from the Ashworth right next mm -hmm. to the intersection and keep them further down and have small uh, automobiles there. Um, and to think of some other creative way to get people off the beach. One of the things we talked about was you've got two lanes coming into the beach. At some point, we need to figure a way to get two lanes going out of the beach. That's not something that's going to be decided in the next 10 years, probably. Mm -hmm. But um, it's something we need to look at because you got them coming in, you also got to get them going out. But I will tell you that our police force does an excellent job of getting people off the beach after uh, fireworks. Uh, I was invited to go down and sit and watch this from a, um, a pleasant view. Uh, and um, they had that beach cleared in no time, and things ran smoothly, just like clockwork. They, they did a phenomenal job of, of moving the traffic. And so I think by using the um, police force rather than lights or roundabouts yeah. or other things, yeah. that that's probably the best way because people at the beach tell me that the traffic is there probably a couple of weeks a year, maybe three or four weekends a year, but it's not all year. So mm -hmm. why put, why overdo something? Uh, let's do it as simply as we can. <laughs> so those are the major uh, decisions that we made. If you have any questions about the individual se uh, sections, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Steve. Go ahead, Marilyn. Yeah, what happened to that proposal, Nancy, to put those parking spaces just south of Boar's Head, right up against the sand, is that gone? Yes. Regina? Um, I just wanted to let the board know that I watched the meeting and you had a lot of motions that night. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it went really well and I really wanted to thank yeah. you, uh, Chairman Stiles and Rick, for listening to the public and pretty much taking everything they said into high consideration. But like everything, I just had one complaint about that night. Not from me. I thought it was a great night. But the only couple people did say was that because the room was so small, they were aggravated because they weren't able to stay for the duration of the meeting. So I just wanted to bring that up to you tonight yeah. since you were here. I understand that. I didn't really anticipate that we'd have a huge crowd that night. Mm -hmm. But I did make it uh, everyone aware that we would listen to any comments that they had. The comment was open until no one wanted to speak. But after, after the comment period is over, there's really no interaction between the board and the public. So, I mean, they could have stayed. They could have stood there and, and watched the whole thing. I had no problem with that. But they might just as well have gone home and, and uh, watched it. Uh, there was a meeting going on here, so we couldn't have a live feed. Right. We had to have it taped. It was hard for the people to realize that there were spaces inside. After it got to a certain point, if people had waited outside, they could have came in. But... Yeah. Because I, I ask people, once you've made your yeah. comment, if you'd like to make your seat available, we would appreciate that. And many did that. Many did that. Mm. What On Mer the 26th, what are you going to be doing, Nancy, uh, at Marston? Um, well, that's the bridge. That's the bridge. Listening that's with you. Bridge. Yeah. Listening with you. So, okay. So, Rick, you have any questions? Yeah, I think that um, it worked out pretty well. I do think that there were probably a few people I know because I saw them out there that ended up not staying. But that was okay, too. And um, I think Nancy does a wonderful job mm. of making it clear and encouraging the people not to be repetitive. Yeah. And, uh, in oh, fact, yeah. you did the best job of that of anyone I've ever seen. And I've been watching for 14 years now. So I've had some really are to be, uh, I just think Nancy has done a great job um, in every way uh, being the new chairman of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And she's made sure the people are listened to and, um, and you know, managed to make it all happen. Um, and she does a lot of other things. She was at the pig roast this week, too, and uh, <laughs> shoveling pig there, which also was a big success this weekend. So thank you. Thank That's you, Nancy. Good. Yeah. Jim? Good. Thank you. The only question I had, and I've heard from a number of people at the beach, and I don't know if it was brought up, and that's why I'm going to bring it up, is when they redid the boulevard a couple of when they when they put the new seashell in, they park all their state trucks where the bus parking used to be. And I've heard some complaints from some of the bus companies and stuff. They have no place to park anymore. Pull in 15, 20 minutes to wait because they're not allowed to do that. 
Is there a better place for the state to park their dump trucks than right in, in the main part of the beach? Well, I think mm -hmm. that they park them there so that they can access the area quicker. Uh, I, have, I have spoken with them about that. Um, as you know, the, um, I don't even like them to park those trucks there when there's garbage in them because I think that is mm -hmm. totally uninviting. Um, when I worked out at the sandcastles, I noticed that they had the buses come in and they po pulled further down. You know where they have the stacked parking? Right. They pulled down in front of that area. Um, of course, they were only there for probably 20 minutes. They weren't right, there for any length of time. But You know, they don't have a place now to actually pull in. And they gave up the, the police department, fire department, used to have a, a big, bigger space than they have there now. Uh, I just, uh, I think it was a poor decision to park the dump trucks in the center of the beach and well, maybe, trash in them. I, I, maybe we I, can have that discussion with the... Uh, Parks when we meet with them. Yeah. Okay. I will tell you too, because I've been here for many, many, many years, uh, more than 40 years, those uh, buses have parked there. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it was a definitely a revenue stream for people that, like there was a time when they would, uh, when Elaine Sharkey knew that the buses were going to be there, they kept all the stores open in the casino. And the reason why they had to be there is because it's almost all older people, mm -hmm. and they can't really be running around all the place. They stop there to go to the bathroom, and then Buy a to coffee. go into all those shops. Yep. And you know, this is the way it's done all over the world. Yeah. I even got this ruby when I stopped in Vietnam. They <laughs> stop in a place to go to the bathroom. You can spend some money. And you know, hey, I spent a couple of thousand of dollars, and there's other people that would do that here in Hampton. Well, you know, we have that, they have that um, before and after season pox meeting down there. Maybe that's something that could be brought up at that time um, by more than just a couple of people, but maybe it could be brought up by several people to say, you know, is this something we can work on changing? Well, it's just, that's the biggest, out of everything I hear down the beach, a lot of times that's the biggest thing is it's, one, the, the, the buses don't have a place, but two, the dump trucks are parked there. So yeah. I just wanted to let you know that that's what I, I'm hearing. Okay. Other than that, you're doing a great job. So I will, he I will hear you say that at the next uh, I will try meeting. to be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will tell you that this grant is supposed to expire on the 31st of August, so I'm hoping when I leave here I'm going home to review what the comments that I've received back to get to them to do the final draft. And then I'll work with um, Chairman McMahon to get that uh, onto the planning board. Um, after that, we will begin the process of looking at the environmental uh, language in the master plan. Uh, and as I was going through the master plan for about the 15th time the other day, I realized that the environment, there are really two separate things in my view of the environment. And one is the water and all of that. But the other one is the, you know, the makeup of the beach, or the look of the beach, the aesthetics of the beach, and mm -hmm. so forth. And so we'll push that one off. We'll deal with the water, which is what you guys are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can work together on that in some fashion and be some very supportive of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, don't forget to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nancy, thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And I am going to shoot home if you don't mind. <laughs> nope, go right ahead. <laughs> I'll watch you on TV. <laughs> Next thing we have is the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the board and the community are cordially invited to attend the September 11th rededication of the Global War on Terrorism Memorial Monument at the American Legion Post 35, uh, 69 High Street, Hampton, on September 11th at 6 p.m. That rededication should be quite an event. It usually is. Mm -hmm. uh, we have received a number of inquiries regarding wind flags, so-called. Yes, they are in violation of the zoning ordinance, and the building department is working on individual complaints as time permits. Probably the, the most serious complaint we receive is they're set too far out and they hit people as they walk down the sidewalk when the wind is blowing in the wrong direction. What's a wind flag? That's it's, weird. The it's feathered flag. It's a feathered flag. It's those long poles with a very thin flag on it. Oh. Uh, you saw, you saw set, them at the poles the other day? I was going to say, we were using them at the poles. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> So the complaints we're receiving are because people are walking down the sidewalks and they're very close to the sidewalk and when the wind is blowing yeah. in the wrong direction, it comes around and hits them. 
So how, how are people allowed to put those on town property? Well, uh, I guess the major complaints we receive are from the beach, so they're on state property. So oh, oh. Uh, I saw the so state will hold a public hearing on the Hampton Harbor Bridge project at the Marston School on Wednesday, September 26th, starting at 7 p.m. Yeah. If you'd like to have input, if you'd like to hear what's going on, please come attend that meeting. It's very important. The town received a challenge recently to the issuance of a $25 fee for a return check. Uh, the fee is specifically authorized by state law, Chapter 358C. While the town does not have a lot of return checks, everyone should know that when they are returned, they will be charged a $25 return fee uh, for unpaid negotiable instruments. Oh. Uh, as you probably all know, and I, we didn't review the statistics tonight, but there was an election last week, <laughs> and 1,020 people showed up to vote. 964 voted yes, 56 to vote, voted no. That was a 94.5% average yes vote, which is very, very, very high. And one of the most important things is please drive carefully starting tomorrow. School opens. Yes. We don't want any any accidents to occur on the first day or any other day of school. That included the absentees because I, I think there were 978 people yep. that showed up. Right. Yeah. Yep. There were a lot of folks that showed up. A lot. Very very high attendance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything for the town manager on his report? We have a couple of things uh, for Fred. The um, scooter parking. At North Beach, I had some people at the polls. I asked me why we couldn't make. Is I guess on there the is scooter. It's old there business. is scooter park. No, it doesn't say old business. It no, says manager's is, report. Oh, it That's on right. But it's and not on apparently, his there's scooter on parking his on the east. It's old business. On the east side. Yeah, so Mary Louise, you want me to do that? Bring it up on the old Mary business. Louise. Oh, That's okay. Just this is for the town manager's report. Okay. I have one thing on town manager's report. Yes. I wanted to, uh, I didn't say it at community events, I know Jim did, but I wanted to also thank everyone that came out to vote yep. on a uh, summer yeah. Friday and the 94.5% yeah. uh, passing rate was phenomenal. So thank you very much, Hampton Voters. And Jim. thank you, Town Management hmm? and Public Works. Yeah, yeah. Jim. yeah the, you, you mentioned the 9-11 ceremony and, sure. and it just encourage everybody to mm -hmm. go to that it is so well done and it's such it a moving <laughs> ceremony and it's it's honoring the people that have, that have passed away during the war of terrorism and will there be a new one added this year because of i i don't know if it's going to be i haven't to been it. told that yet but correct yeah. yeah but i mean we rec recently had a marine from yes hampton, uh, hampton who passed mm -hmm. away uh, in yeah so i don't know how that that yeah. whole thing is, yeah, but I'm sure but eventually that will be. Everybody should go to that ceremony because Absolutely. It's well Absolutely. done. Rick? No, thanks for your report. Thank you. Old business. RSA 4114, a vote 15 Epping Ave, map 299, lot 4, release deed restriction number 4. So should we do these each? At I would do them separately. All right, so we have a. Uh, I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. I have a move. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Uh, just oh, so you know, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I've uh, provided the vo the board very specific uh, language for these. Uh, there are times where the board, for instance, with the uh, four, f when people request fences up to six feet, mm -hmm. uh, this is this. I'm referring to the second one now. Yep. Uh, the board has uh, tended to authorize only up to no more than four feet. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've prepared motions that are consistent with the way the board has acted before. Mm -hmm. And once the board approves those, I then proceed to draft for your signatures um, modifications of deed restrictions that are recorded in the registry. I have copies of the motions if you're. Okay, well, if you bring them up. Just sure. You're up there. It's uh, a lot of words, but it uh, does give the authorization needed. Well, he'll read it. Can they read it? 
read this or you want to read it? Or? I'll let you read it. But. <laughs> and this is what, number two that we're doing? Is this for the this is the, for the number two one, so there's, we need... There's actually one th for each. There's one for each, so this will be the 15. Yep. Oh, okay. I move the board modify the first sentence only of deed restriction number four contained in the quick claim deed from the town to Bernard McLaughlin and Claire B. McLaughlin dated March 25th, 1985 and recorded in Rockingham County Registry of Deeds book 2541, page 1069, which now reads, the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line, nor shall the premises be subdivided. So that the first sentence will then read, the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within the setbacks prescribed in the Hampton Zoning Ordinance, except to the extent allowed by the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment by variance once said variance becomes final, leaving intact the remainder of the deed restriction number four, said modification to be mem memorialized in a modification of deed restriction <laughs> document to be drafted by the town attorney for the selectmen's signatures and recording. Second. All those in favor? So you we're taking this as number one. And that is number because one. Because I, I will just correct that I, I'm moving one. Okay. Because I think I mentioned two when I made yeah. the motion. So we're going to, number two is now RSA 4114A vote 5A street, street map. One, uh, 220 lot 2 release deed restriction number 3 do you want me to read that one yeah I, yep. move, I move that the board modify deed restriction number 3 regarding fence height as contained in the quick claim deed from the town of, to Kathleen A. Quinn and Sally A. Quinn dated December 3rd 1984 and recorded in Rockingham County Registry of Deeds book 2523 page 1411 so the said restriction will then read, three, no fences may be erected upon said premises other than ornamental fences of no more than a four foot height. Said modification to be memorialized in the modification of deed restriction document to be drafted by the town attorney for the selectmen's signatures and recording. Okay. Also move, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Second so for discussion. Yes. Okay. I'll second that. All right. What, whatever. Um, so we're going to allow four feet because that is consistent what we've done in the past with everyone else that has requested that. Okay. I'm okay with that. Thank that you. Okay. Any other questions? I, uh, I, I'm a little hesitant with this because I, I think we should be allow them to go to the five feet, especially if they're doing the, the fence with the, the, that was shown us the picture with the, the pot on the top and five feet doesn't get us in any trouble and I think people should be able to allow a fence in their property so um, my my thing would be no more than five feet but I, I don't, know how I don't have a real notice. problem with that either I don't have a problem with it either did you want me to so amend I'll, my motion to five no more insert than, no more than no five more than feet. five foot height and so council are going to get us excited. <laughs> reading council is paperwork he put in that says they can, as long as it's no more than five feet. So, uh, so we have a, an amended motion to to allow that to no more than five foot instead of no more than four foot. Is that okay? Do you need a second on the oh. amendment? You you well you, will you yeah. second that the amendment? I will second that. Yes. All right. Town manager, have any problem with that? No, anything about five feet can literally be, be determined to be a spite fence. Yes. So you don't want to get above five feet if you don't have right. to. Right. Okay. okay. So we have a motion. Uh, do we need to vote on the amendment first? Or? No, just because it was amended to that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. The motion said, so it was amended to, to, five, to five, five foot. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. It's marked during the ancient highway part. Now we have. The, the no. third one on old business is ancient highway no parking on both sides from James Street South to 1A. Yep. What do we? I have a question. Do you want to? a motion on the table. I'll so move to, for discussion. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Go ahead, Mary Louise. Um, do the individuals in this sec section of highway 
have access to parking on their own property? The answer is yes. They do. They do. I went down and looked at it. Uh, and um, the problem is as you come around the corner, as you enter, as you enter the south end of Ancient Highway, it's a very short distance to the curve, yeah. which right. makes you drive north. Yeah. That area is very narrow, mm -hmm. and if someone and somebody has been parking occasionally uh, after you make that turn to go north on Ancient Highway, you have to stop. There's just there's no way that two cars can traverse in that area. Okay. So the reason that we're requesting that you, in fact, put no parking signs for both sides from... Um, James Street south to Route 1A is to allow free passage of vehicles. There are driveways there for the individual parcels of property. Okay, so they're just going to have to stay off the side of the road for exactly. parking. Exactly. Yeah, they're going yeah, to have to stay in the driveways. The okay, as right. long as they have an existing spot to park in, I don't have a yeah. problem with it. So we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Any other old I business? Can I do old business now? Get everybody exciting? I understand, and I don't own a scooter, but I understand there is scooter parking on the ocean side at North Beach. But I had um, individuals explain to me that we could be a lot more um, efficient if we converted the vehicle parking spots on the west side of 1A, right in that vicinity, and, c and basically cut the parking spaces in half and make that scooter parking. Because there a lot of people are using scooters at the beach. In, in what parking lot? I, it, I don't do scooters. So no, they said it's North lot? Beach, uh, and they, there's a scooter parking on the ocean side. And on the inside, on the west side, is regular parking. And it seems that there's more of a demand for scooter parking there than it is for the regular parking. Yeah, Regina knows better than I do. I think she's referring to, we were both at the uh, town election together. Some of the residents were complaining that, you know, we have the resident lot over on the east side, and then we also have the one in the middle of Kings Highway. If some of that could have, instead of less car spots, scooter spots, because some of the residents down there feel like more people yeah. travel there on scooters. So if they had more availability for scooters to park more Isn't people. Isn't there already a scooter park there? There is, and I went by it the other day, and in fact, half the spaces are empty. Yeah. Huh. And, and my problem is, is if it, you're taking away regular parking spaces for scooter spaces, then you're taking away regular parking spaces. Right. Yeah. That's my concern. The indication was that they're really not used so much for parking. I don't do scooters, so I don't know, but I thought there I'd... There is a scooter park there. I thought I'd pass that on. I, and the next uh, comment I had at the polls was uh, some individuals who are concerned about the conditions in the cemetery. They said the grass is growing all out of uh, whack and uh, the roads are terrible. And uh, one lady said she, uh, I guess, has either just buried her husband or is about to, and she was very upset about the conditions in the cemetery. I just suggest that we pass that along to the cemetery trustees because that's their bailiwick, not ours. They already know. Okay. Well, thank you, Fred. I appreciate that. And the last one was uh, uh, individuals who are complaining about a lack of uh, crosswalks on the Exeter Road. There are people who have some, not necessarily handicaps, but they're a little, um, a little, they have a little problem with walking. And sometimes the the crosswalks are so far apart that just in order to try to cross the street. They have to walk way up to whatever. Can we have uh, maybe just some kind of um, consideration by Public Works? I'm not sure how crosswalks are assigned. They go from sidewalk to sidewalk. Right. So in order to put a crosswalk where there's no sidewalk, you've got to put it in the middle of the paved road on the edge. Ah. So basically what you're doing there is you're taking up part of the roadway for a sidewalk. The crossing has to be from street to the sidewalk on the other side. It usually goes from sidewalk to sidewalk. Okay. Otherwise, you're taking drivable distances and all, in the road. So also, I talked to Public Works about the one that you were talking about. Yeah. And the, the problem is it's a, it's a corner. Mm -hmm. And so it's tough. You don't want to have a crosswalk on a corner because it's a limited sight yeah. distance. You also have that extra turning lane to go up to, into the old Barron property. Yeah. And oh, yeah. so that makes it even tougher there. So. It, 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 we did it's, talk about it. We did discuss it's it. It's hard for the hard, poor gentleman. Absolutely. Yeah. 
we looked at it, but it would just be a hard place to put it in and a hard one to, you know, it could be a dangerous one to put yeah. in. So. But I promised I'd ask, so. Well, pedestrians do have the right of way. But that's yeah. that's a 35, I think it's 35 mile speed limit on that road. Theoretically, yeah. Theoretically, <laughs> well, uh, they do a lot of tickets up there, so I can tell you they're trying to keep speed down there, so. Yeah. Uh, but it is business? dangerous. Yeah, I do. We'll go, come on. Yeah, it's not, I, I guess I could do older and new, but we have some <laughs> comments in here, one from CMA Engineers and one from the planning board, it looks like, and they're both on Mary Bachelor Road and the Timber Swamp Road project. Uh, mm -hmm. I just don't ever remember receiving these types of comments yeah. before. I've gone through them a little bit, but it seems like, is it both the planning board and the engineers have problems with? And an excellent response from, from Mr. Welch. We all have problems with that project. Yes. Uh, we're talking about a lot of houses to be built in a relatively small area. Um, Mary Road. Batchelder Road is a, is a very small roadway. Uh, you're going to have quite a number of driveways plus another street intersecting with that roadway. The roadway is in bad condition. It has no drainage. Mm -hmm. It just has um, uh, leach pits at the end, which are, are uh, covered by catch basin lids. Um, the problem is with all those driveways intersecting, you're going to increase the runoff going down the roadway. Yep. It's, just, it's just a logical thing that's going to happen. You're also going to have um, more snow bankings because you've got driveways to clear. Yep. Um, they're also going to have sewers in there, so that's going to be, some of those cuts are 19 to 20 feet deep. They're very deep in order to get into the sewer system. Um, how does this affect the 201 study too? The 201 study is affected because they're proposing something that's in violation of the town meeting vote of the 201 study. Uh -huh. That's been brought up to them. They understand that. Um, probably um, they'll have to come before this board and then have to come before town meeting to change that vote. I just don't see that happening. You are the sewer commissioners. I don't see that occurring. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of work to be done there and a lot of things to be ironed out before anything's going to happen there. Um, it's, it's, and the same problem goes for um, Timber Swamp Road. Yep. Where the, the two roads intersect, there's very little turning radii on that roadway to go from Timber Swamp into Mary Batchelder and back, back the other way. Um, so there's also some consideration for the number of vehicles that are going to be using that area since none of them are going to go through uh, Liberty Lane, they're all going to go out on either Timber Swamp or Mary Bachelor Road, uh, there's a question as, as to whether or not the roadway needs to be rebuilt and widened. Yeah. Um, and certainly the town should not have to do that. So there are a lot of issues to be addressed. There's a lot of things, a lot of questions to be answered, and it's going to take some time to get that ironed out. And that was all taken up at the PRC, right? It was all taken up at the yeah. PRC. It was all explained to them that they would have to come back to us as the sewer commissioners and stuff. So nothing's moving forward, right? Not that they're trying to reformulate right. their plans to yeah. make everything yeah. acceptable. Um, I want to yep, comment as well. And thank you, Regina, for bringing that up. Uh, your memo to the town planner on August 9th is excellent, Fred, and I do... I don't know what your expectations are, but um, you are, do mention at one point in here that all of these off-site improvements on Mary Batchelder should be the responsibility of the developer, not the town. As far as I am concerned these days, the developers are raping this community, and this building has got to stop. Okay, okay. any other yes. old business? Okay, we have this letter in here about the people complaining about a music fair being held in Wally's parking yeah. lot. You know, what is the story here? I didn't really realize when we okayed it that it was for seven days. Yeah. And so, so how does this happen? I agree with the letter. Yeah. Uh, you have authorized um, that particular venue to have both indoor and outdoor entertainment on that lot. Uh, okay, well, when you approve their where entertainment else have license, we done this before? You haven't. No, and I think that before this happens again, there should be some type of an open conversation so that the whole public yep. knows this is going to happen. This is not fair to the people that live around here. And I'm going to read the letter. 
In Wally's parking lot on this day, a music festival was held. It was so loud and only 20 feet, 20 feet from my house or my place. When I asked for a permit to when I asked for a permit to see how this was this event, only one was from the fire department was produced and only after several hours. How can this type of event be held without your approval? Did you people approve this event? If you did not approve this, then how did it happen? My tenants wanted to leave and wanted their monies back. I talked them into staying, but they will never be back. This is a residential area, and this type of event should never have been held in a residential area. I totally agree with this. How can I be assured that this will never happen again? It took us over two years of meetings with you folks, which it was probably more like 10 years, mm -hmm. to have a wooden fence built to reduce the noise level, and without anything said to anyone, it was torn down. Why? Not one of you around this table would want or approve this to happen to next to your home. Please help us so that this will never happen to us again. Our tax rate is the same as everyone else, which is a lot. Uh, which is a lot. Yet we are not able to vote on anything. Taxation without representations. How many times? And then the rest of the letter is not even here, so I can't. Or maybe it is. It's stuck together. Um, oh, it did. Uh, although it doesn't make sense because there's not, the rest of the letter is not here. And, uh, you know, Wally's was not, they had to keep their doors closed to mm -hmm. have the music. Uh, for them to have a music permit. Yep. But somehow this did sleep, slip through, and my name is on it, but I didn't see the thing that said, this is Monday through Thursday for entertainment to end at, at 11 p.m., Friday and Saturday, a legal holiday, outside entertainment to end at 11.59. I understand that's the rule if you have a, uh, a dance hall permit uh, to have music at that time. But this is outside. It should never have yeah. been allowed. Uh, all of these people that came for all these meetings that went on after numerous boards of selectmen that I was on were always, you know, the music's supposed to stay inside the building. And I could see we've allowed them to have barbecues or uh, clam bakes and this and that. And I, kind, I just automatically thought that that's what this was. And I think before anything like this happens again, the neighbors should all be warned so that they can come in here and comment. This for it to have happened, and, a, and we're, I've never even seen it happen anywhere else in the whole town. Mm. Uh, and if this is the type of thing that's going to happen, you know, this is a residential neighborhood. Uh, it, there's a bit we've gone through, we've done. This is something that was snuck through here and it shouldn't happen again. And I'd like to know what we're gonna do to make sure it doesn't happen without the neighbors being informed of it in advance. Don't vote for it. The for board what? voted to grant the permit for it. Yeah, well, I, I personally don't think that this was uh, presented to us in a right way that I even realized it. What date was the vote? I don't know, but it was on the agenda at the time you approved it his... June, June 18th, it was... Yeah, and yeah. nothing like this has ever been, has I come agree. before, and I, I, I thought it was for maybe for one night, and I didn't realize about even the 11.59 that they'd be able to have bands playing outside in a parking lot at 11.59 at yeah. night. Yeah. It's, I understand, like, Little Jacks is having some type of event that they're having a motorcycle rally, yeah. and it's during the day. And I wouldn't have a problem with this if this is during the day. And it was for a one day, and may, you know, maybe even more, but may, I think something like this should be limited to one day. For this to have been put in here and uh, Friday to make it go for seven days, and for them to be able to charge money, $30, mm -hmm. uh, dollars, uh, to have it amuse, I don't know if they ever the people paid thirty dollars every single day. I have no problem with them making the money, but let them charge thirty dollars and have them inside the building. Mm. This is wrong, and it will never happen again when I'm here. But I want to know how are the c people that live next to this going to know that this is happening? Yeah. They have to read the agenda. It's on the agenda. 
And, and in advance, or we it's just slipped in here like this happened. No, it's it's on the agenda in advance. It says you know that they have uh, a request. This is their regular entertainment license. Correct. And yeah, they but it should be outside in the parking lot. The entertainment license specifically said that they wanted outdoor entertainment, and the board did approve it. Uh, you shouldn't have approved it. I'm not arguing that, but if you don't want it, you shouldn't approve it. But in fact, this did get approved, I think, without debate, basically without, yeah, well, without I don't objection. Think anyone realized what it was. Yeah. And I, I don't think the people realized. Yeah. So what are you saying? He can do this again with the license he has now? His license is good until March 31st. Oh. And that he could have this without coming. This is his entertainment license. His yes. entertainment license for the year. Sure. So it says on here, Monday through Friday, outside entertainment. To this is just plain wrong. And once again, Mr. Fleury has uh, uh, abused his ability and has made it very difficult for everybody that's in business in Hampton. I, 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 yeah, I guess go ahead. I just want to say that that I signed that too, and I did not read it carefully enough, and it's my fault for signing it. You know, I don't think we should assign the blame to anybody else. I think when we get these, we should read them thoroughly to make sure we know what we're signing. Yeah. I agree with Jim, but are you? Do we have a specific license for this, or is that his regular entertainment? Well, it's regular evidently I part of his entertainment license. Okay. Wow. All right. And he has question, to get permission from you. He has to get right. permission from the state. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on both. Yeah. Well, right. this will never happen again, and I think as a town manager, Mr. Welch, you should be bringing this up to us and advising us that this is on here. This is not uh, fair to anyone that lives around there. That's why we give you these sometimes weeks in advance to read, mm -hmm. because we want to make sure you know what's there. Well, these things cause problems. Out. Rusty? Yes? Is there anything we can do at this point if we wanted to make a correction on this? Or is it he's got it for the year? I mean, it's almost the end of the summer you, anyways. You, you, you've received a complaint. You can send a letter to him saying that you would prefer that this not happen again to the remainder of this year. Uh, and he can either cooperate with you or he may not get a license next year. Okay, and, and I will make that a motion that we send a letter to him saying exactly that. I won't because I went down there that day. Um, and checked out on it when I heard. I didn't, I, did I didn't realize what you didn't realize. Same thing, I didn't realize it. Someone called me that lives on that road, and I went down to her house. And it was outside, and sometime, I think he had, maybe the chief of police or the fire chief had gone over there because they had received some complaints. And he did, that night, pull the entertainment inside at 7 o'clock. And the residents on that street will verify that. It was all cleaned up and inside by 7 o'clock at night. Well, and that's good, yeah, but so, I still say so. we should send the letter that we don't want what was what, what, what was put in here done again in the following year. Except and I want to send him a letter, and I'll make the motion that we send the letter explaining our position. And we can even say that we appreciate that he did bring it inside, if that so happened. That's not what the letter says from the... from the. Uh, well, that I was down there. I, I went down twice, and... Uh, it, it, it was a little noisy, but he did tell the, the police chief he would bring it in by 7, and that's what... Uh, well, I want to make sure that we that. send him a letter saying that so that this won't happen again. Well, if he has permission to do it until next March, of course, he's not going to do it well, in the winter. This is obviously. about sending the letter. Yes. Right. But, but the, that letter would pertain to huh? what happens... Well, we for the renewal permission. we right. gave him permission to do it so yeah um, like it or not that's what he has for permission to do and mr uh, welch suggested that we could send a letter saying if that's that what the board wants to do we certainly will I send think a letter we for should you send a letter saying that this isn't what we have in mind well, we have a motion is there a second seeing none thank you um uh, well, we we need to I'm flag sure this when it comes we up. We need to flag. Renewal. Correct. Right? Yes, I'm exactly. sure he heard you. Yeah. Well, uh, that doesn't. See, that's never worked in the past. <coughs> no. Right. And I, I don't think it's working now. I th and, you know I'm glad to hear that this happened, but I didn't even see anyone bring any of this up. We've obviously got this letter, and I think it's disgraceful. Mm -hmm. well, 
And I will tell you that in case anyone's not aware of it, the people in the Boar's Head area are still complaining about the noise. They're calling the police on a regular basis uh, about uh, Bernie's Beach Bar, too. So for that never gets brought up here, but I do know, and I, uh, the police are getting the reports, and it's not been mentioned here at all, but I'm just gonna bring that up there. So, for, and then for me to see this, it's not right at all, and uh, I don't understand why something's not all right. being done well, about it. All right, a motion was made and it, what, there was no well, second, it will be, so. Next time it happens, there'll be a lot to be said about it. Okay, so we're moving on to new business. Okay. We have a 12 River Ave lease improvement request. Uh, these folks want to add, they have a leased lot, they have a structure on that leased lot, they have sent you a request in accordance with their, uh, their lease requirements, they would like to make an addition to the building, uh, yeah. and they've specified how much they want to do, what, what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to add 460 square feet to a second floor. Uh, so that it's basically livable. They have given you pictures of the existing structure, yeah. and they have given you uh, representations of what the, the new structure would look like. It basically occupies the same footprint, um, but they would like to put that second floor on for mm -hmm. additional living space. Yeah. So do we have a motion to uh, allow the lease approval? Regina? I'll second. Second, any questions? Now does this have to go to the building inspector and the planning board too, or? Uh, has to go all through the normal processes, yeah. okay. but their their deed requires them so to come to you the lease. for permission. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Letter to Senator Shaheen Hampton, Seabrook Harbor Dredge Repairs. Report. I believe you've all seen the letter. Uh, we yes. also attached a series of exhibits to the letter. Uh, that same letter has gone and is being discussed tonight with the selectmen in Seabrook who have voted to yeah. um, join the Board of Selectmen in Hampton uh, with regards to the Army Corps engineer dredging requests for Hampton and Seabrook Harbor. Mm. Um, we request the board review it if you agree with it, to sign it, and we will send it off to Senator Shaheen, Senator Hassan, and the governor uh, for whatever action they, they think they can actually get out of the Army Corps. <laughs> I will mention that the Army Corps does not have an appropriation for this fiscal year from Congress. They are operating on residual funds. Uh, the fiscal year ends in October, which is pretty close, uh, but yet they have had no appropriation voted by Congress to do any of this work anywhere in the United States. So they're just operating on existing contracts that are out and money left in their reserve funds. Hmm. Um, I can tell you Senator Shaheen and Senator Hassan have, have both filed bills in Congress uh, to allow this dredge to take place and the repairs to take place. But the Army Corps is resistant in doing that. I make a motion that we sign the letter. I've heard it. And I'll second. second that. Yeah. Any questions? And, and a lot of credit to Senator Shaheen for a all she's done. A lot of credit done. to the town manager for yeah. going and after And the town trip. manager has been working with her, yes. Motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. The NHMA Legislative Policy Conference voting delegate. Mr. Chairman, I would like to be the uh, voting delegate this year of the board. I would so yes. move. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. That was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Selectman finds attendance to the New England Waterworks Association. Yeah. Any WWA annual meeting? Yes, uh, I've been talking, well, as the Aquarian rep, uh, Carl is actually going to be speaking there on one of the mornings, and with some of the water work I've been doing and a um, project I've been working on that I'm looking to present to the board at the next meeting if all goes well. I would like to attend this. I was planning on attending it anyway, but I would like to ha ask the board's permission to attend as a representative mm -hmm. of the town of Hampton. To make that motion. I'll second, Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, I have a repeal of Chapter 758 soliciting. Mr. Town Manager. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we have been corresponding with the 
uh, New Hampshire chapter of the American Civil Liberties, uh, the ACLU. Um, the Supreme Court recently ruled that the ordinance, and this comes from a state statute, a fairly old one, uh, the town has adopted uh, through the Board of Selectmen. Um, the courts have recently ruled, the U.S. Supreme Court has, that this, is, this ordinance does not com make uh, compliance with the Constitution of the United States. Um, we recommend on that basis that the board repeal the ordinance, which was a selectman's ordinance. There are a couple of other ordinances that indirectly address this. We would encourage people if they, if this is repealed and you do not want solicitors at your door, to put a little note on your door that says no solicitations. And the <coughs> American Civil Liberties Union says that's enforceable under the law. So if you are aggravated by people who want to come and solicit from you, we recommend you do that. But this ordinance could get us into trouble. Um, I had a, uh, a run-in with the ACLU in another town uh, on a different matter, and uh, we ended up in court uh, with a case that was filed uh, through another agency, and we never even got in front of the judge, but it cost us over $100,000 just to have it filed and dismissed. So I don't see why we should spend that kind of money. There is another ordinance on the books that the police can enforce. We suggest that they, in fact, look to those ordinances. I have a question. Yes. By the time they get to your door to see the no soliciting uh, uh, little memo, uh, they're already on your property. Um, I think this is ridiculous. And we, uh, what are we going? We're going to start selling signs now you'd have to put out no trespassing signs i suppose i don't know can well, is that you, enforceable you, if you i put could, a note if note you post your property under the statute in accordance with the no trespassing law you can in fact have them arrested for trespassing okay. but anyone can come to your front door oh yeah uh there's no way you can stop them as unless you have a gate and it's locked uh which is kind of a silly thing to have to do or a good dog uh, well yeah one that's perhaps hungry a little bit uh, in fact I, I used that with a solicitor that came to my door a number of years ago trying to sell me magazines good um, this is just something to keep us from having to pay nuisance money to someone town council can brief you better than I can on that but some of these cases cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and you don't even get in front of the judge well. so this is just a this is a nuisance situation. There are other statutes that cover this, including the no solicitation and no trespassing. Well, I respect counsel's uh, advice. I will just hold my nose while I'm writing, uh, voting for it. Um, I like to hear from town council on this. I'm not comfortable with repealing this ordinance. Um, not comfortable with the American Civil Liberties Union of New Hampshire telling Mm. the town of Hampton, what's best for it, what's best yeah. for its elderly, what's best for its children, what's best for its neighborhoods. Yeah. So I like to hear from town council, and then if the board allows, I would also like to hear from our state senator, who's one of our lawmakers here and represents us in Hampton, and ha see what he has to say about it, because I am not comfortable voting to repeal this ordinance. Mm. Good. Mm. Go ahead. The um, particular town code provisions that are involved are entitled soliciting funds for charitable purposes. The, uh, this was adopted back in 2007 and since that time the, new, the U.S. Supreme Court has become very aggressive in a number of areas in terms of, uh, of, of cracking down on uh, state and municipality regulations which uh, address the content of speech. What they have said in, in, in several different uh, forms is that, uh, first of all, the ordinance would need to be justified by a compelling state interest. Mm -hmm. In other words, there is what they call strict scrutiny, which is the highest level of scrutiny that the courts attach. Yeah. And second of all, even where there is such a compelling state interest, they say that you need to 
uh, utilize the least restrictive means for regulation. Mm -hmm. And I have examined all the cases that the American Civil Liberties Union has recited to us, and invariably the court looks at the means that the ordinances use and find they say, well, it can be less restrictive than that. And in particular, when you talk about door-to-door -door solicitation, the, the courts tend to say exactly what the manager said, that that's better controlled by people who don't want that type of thing, saying no solicitation. Um, I personally uh, am much, uh, feel much like you do, uh, Slackman Barnes, uh, but I have to tell you that in this climate with this Supreme Court, mm -hmm. acting the way they have with regard to a number of instances, door-to-door -door solicitations, panhandling, mm -hmm. um, and, and activities like that, uh, and with uh, an aggressive American Civil Liberties Union behind this, a, a court challenge, uh, once you're on the radar screen, uh, is inevitable and uh, likely not to succeed, at least on the basis of what we have now. Mm -hmm. um, I have thought of some alternatives that I have run by the uh, attorney who wrote this particular letter, uh, which he has rejected. I would like to think that a, a municipality, for the benefit of especially its uh, res elderly residents, uh, could regulate at least the time, place, and manner of, of uh, activities like this. Uh, but unfortunately, in this climate, at this particular point in time, um, I have to say that the cost for keeping on the books what we have now would far outweigh any benefit because, uh, as the town manager said, uh, one of the incentives for these things to be challenged is the attorney's fees awards that the uh, U.S., uh, that, the, that the law, the federal law involves. And uh, we, we saw this in the case several years ago uh, where the, there was um, – uh, sidewalk preachers down at the beach who challenged the convictions uh, under disorderly conduct and it cost the town uh, without even having any sort of hearing on the merits just a preliminary hearing some thirty thousand dollars in an attorney's fees paid to the other side plus of course there was there was charges for our own outside counsel so whenever you have a constitutional challenge like this, uh, you have to be concerned is, 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 uh, are the, are the, are, is the end that we are seeking to achieve worth the cost of such a challenge in this particular climate. And so reluctantly, I have to say, I, I recommend that we um, repeal this particular code section. How much did we have to pay to that preacher? Um, I believe it was more the attorney's fees that resulted yeah. in uh, there were some specific circumstances involving a criminal conviction that was undone. Um, and I think it was more paying, uh, I think it was, a, uh, it was uh, like a $1,500 in compensatory damages, but the big amount there was about $30,000 to his attorneys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the big thing. And Plus our attorneys, right? Plus our attorneys and as isn't well. Isn't this similar to the uh, bear the nipple or whatever it was? Um, well, we, we, we uh, I don't I think, think it's we, another thing that you can't really control. I, <laughs> well, I think that may be a different kettle of fish. Uh, but, but of it's course, still the same type of thing. I think that particular subject is actually at the New Hampshire Supreme Court under a challenge to uh, something in the Lakes region, the city of Laconia conviction. Uh, but you are correct that there is free speech elements to such a thing, and uh, that would certainly be a consideration there as well. The Supreme Court of the United States seems to be extending this kind of First, first Amendment protection to many forms of expression. So, Fred, you recommend that we do this? I, I don't see how we can avoid it yeah. and, and follow the orders of the Supreme Court, which were obligated to obey. Uh, perhaps we can find a different way to regulate this process as time goes along. Uh, but I would certainly encourage our residents who do not want to be bothered by these people to in fact put a sign up their front door, no soliciting, and, and make it stick. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, before we make a motion on this, I have asked the state senator as a lawmaker and a town council, I totally respect you 100%, but I'm an auditor and I opinion shop. And sure. I would like to uh, hear from our state senator on this before I make a decision. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Uh, here at the table? Sure. <laughs> All right. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, Dan Innes, state I'd just senator. like to uh, thank Did Senator Innes once more for his assistance in uh, the legislation that was enacted at the end of May that enabled us to conduct the, um, the emergency yeah. town mm -hmm. meeting. Uh, yeah. that occurred uh, last Friday well, happy, that was yeah. critical to, to us. And what a great vote. You guys capped it off yeah. nicely. Yeah, Look, thank you for that. You know, happy, to, happy to do it. Look, I'm not going to sit here and argue that, that um, you ought to, ought to go against the Supreme Court ruling. I will tell you that my heart says we ought to be free to regulate this sort of thing at the town yeah. level. And this mm -hmm. is one of those rare cases where the state allows you to do it. Uh, but... My sense is, given the arguments that I've heard this evening and knowing the New Hampshire ACLU, that maybe you could find a way to put some guardrails around solicitation that effectively gets you where you need to be without violating the law and without suppressing free speech. Um, I know that the only thing you're looking at this evening is you know, whether or not to repeal this. Um, but I wonder if the next step is to come back with some mm -hmm. restrictions that make it a little more difficult for folks to solicit in the community. Um, we can, if you send me back to Concord, and I hope you will, we can take a look at doing something at the state level as well, legislatively. Yeah. I don't know what that would look like. Uh, and I know um, Select Board Member um, Barnes, um, you know, the desire might be to say we're going to push back against the ACLU and and so on. I'm not really sure this is that it's the ACLU that we need to push back on. Right. And pushing back on the Supreme Court is pretty tough. Yeah, um, okay. the ACLU is kind of carrying the water. Um, so again, my suggestion would be, you know, if you're going to repeal this, maybe look at, at putting some restrictions in place that'll make it tougher. Perhaps. Um, I mean, Perhaps. that's essentially what we were doing with the internet sales tax mm -hmm. bill that we oh, yeah. tried to get through. Yeah. Let's make it difficult for folks to get that sales tax from our residents. Perhaps so, so, submitting an amendment to 3191 to take into account the ACLU's objections, but still yeah. accomplishing the task. Yeah. Which I'll will be in order. Repeal. Exactly. Okay. Motion. I'll second you. Uh, second. All those in favor? Four. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you for coming in, Four. sir. Thank Four, you. Four, yes, one abstain. And okay. I want to thank the senator for, I did ask him to come, yeah. and he did. Yeah. Thank you very much. Happy to do it. Anytime. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Anything else in the new business? Uh, just one thing, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, we have started receiving complaints about campaign material being mm -hmm. yes. put around town. Correct. And I just... There is a statute, RSA 664.17, which we're required to, um, in fact, administer, and it deals with state highways. That's your problem with the state. We don't want to have anything to do with that. Um, there is no way to put those signs unless you get individual permission from this board on town property. Uh, please put them on private property. If you take a look at where the telephone poles are, there's about a foot behind the pole, which is where the public property ends. As a general rule, keep it behind there. Other than that, do not do not attach it to the phone poles. Do not attach it to other things in the air, trees or whatever, oh, right. uh, that are on public property because we're going to be taking them down as we have in the past. We're not out looking for them, uh, but when we see them, we do take them down, and they will be at the back of the town hall for you to pick up anytime you want. You know, I'd like to just add to that that it, 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 it makes no sense. I mean, it, it looks stupid that have 15 signs, right. even in state property, down on the rotary. Do you yeah. know? It's, right. it's absolutely foolishness. And if people look at that and say, nobody's supporting them, it's just somebody putting it out there. You know, if it's on a private property, then somebody's supporting that individual. Yeah. It, but it, otherwise, they're just sticking signs. Interestingly that, enough, if the state highway and Route 1 is not something the state laid out as their property, you have to get permission from the person who owns the property. Uh -huh. I see five of them sitting here. Oh. The town built that road. 
And we ought to take all those up because they look horrendous. Wow. They, do. they need to talk to the state. And I think that, you know, this, this is a good point to be made, but I'd like to find a time when we're going to have it on the agenda, when we're going to approach these people and keep putting these cones. And now the big thing is reflectors. People are putting reflectors on the public way uh -huh. so that people cannot park in front of what they deem wow. as their homes. I think that I can tell you, there's right on your street, Mary Louise, they're all over the place. That's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. Just have this board make a motion, take a vote that anything is erected within the public way that is not public property will be removed. Mm. I'll second Rick. I'll that. make that motion. Yeah. Wait, I have a question. I, it's not really about signs, but well, it's about signs, not about political <laughs> signs. And we're talking about no parking signs that we don't. No, think I'm talking about people no. that are putting these reflectors and these but, cones up and on town property. They don't want people to park how, in what they see as oh. their yard. Right. Well, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Sure. People seeing yeah. things that down on Harbor Road, there's a walkway that goes out to. Oh yes. The uh, <laughs> yes. There you Mr. Go. Council, would you, you join us, please? Yeah. Uh-oh. There was, at one point in time, a lifeboat station uh, yes, it where Route 1A, Route 1A is now, and it, it was just the other side of where the Chinese restaurant is. Mm -hmm. And there was a railway that ran down through what is now the Chinese restaurant, went down around that hill, came back around, and went down into the harbor. Ooh. There is, at the base of I think it's building one, the first building on the left. Um, just past that, there is a boardwalk that goes out to the harbor. That's town property. And, and part of that building is incidentally on town property. Mm. And the um, people think and, that they own right. that thing, right. and they go they on and on about it. They have recently erected a no trespassing private property sign on that beach. Yeah. And I believe that since they have refused to accept the deed to that, which the federal government gave to the town, and allowed us to offer them to accept it, and we did, and they have refused it. I think it's time to, for the, and we, this, this was brought up just the other day to me, that uh, in fact, we pull that paperwork out, we document it to them and tell them it's town property, they have to take their sign down, they have to stop giving harassment to citizens and people who want to use that. We also own three lots in the harbor underwater at the end of that beach. Yeah. No. So, well, well, someone that lives there came to me and went on and on and on about how they clean it and it's their land and this and that. I told them it not, wasn't, but they didn't want to hear it. No, it's public yeah. property. There, so, there are no private beaches in New Hampshire, right, no. are there? Uh, yeah, there are, but you have to own all the property right. You don't own the water. You don't own the water. You don't own the you beach. Have, but no, you have to own the property up to the water. Yeah. So you can't get there from this here. This is a town on property. Right, right. No, what I'm saying is that you have to have access to beaches in New Hampshire. Like even where the, the surf club is and the, and the swim club and stuff, in front of those buildings, there's access. You, you can use that beach. That's true, but that's property this, that you're allowed to use in this particular case. I was, on the yeah, plan, I, I, I was on the zoning board when this was approved 14 years ago, maybe yep, 15 years yep. ago. And they were told then that the public would always have to be able and to use that property. And I think the public should have the, the access. So that needs to come it down. down. It is town property. You yeah. have a right so to order that. So add that into the, to the um, thing. But what I'm concerned about is the actual right-of-ways, like you mentioned about in front of the phone poles, mm -hmm. that now people, I, I went to a party this week, and the people on the whole street no one could park everyone's parked in the middle of the street there wasn't room for a fire station a fire truck to go through that's why they're the allowed problems. to pull off the road yep. and the people are taking care of the, the land but it's not their land and they have reflectors that go right up to the pavement wow. and it's a simple solution cones the cones are all over plus there are rocks we did we did at one point uh, several years ago this was down the beach. People it's were putting furniture out in the street to preserve yeah. their parking spots. Uh, uh, yeah. And we actually started picking the furniture up, yeah. which ended that problem. But now you're correct, they're becoming more inventive. It's, now they're doing it in town, too. Right. Yeah. So, so there's, you've got a motion, right? Yes. And incorporate the Harbor Road sign and in there? Well, the Harbor, uh, yeah. Harbor Road, actually, I would say, has some quirks in it. It does. Uh, Harbor Road itself. Well, let's go on our let's first motion. Yeah, that first I made motion. About the cones, the reflectors, all in the that. public ways. Yeah. Right. 
All those in favor? Unanimous. Now so we'll talk what, about what do we Road. do when we see this? Call who? Public Works. Yeah, because I, I, there were some pretty people that were upset. Send, send me an email and send it to public, and call Public Works at the same time. Mm -hmm. So now we'll have a motion to clarify who owns that property. And if it is indeed the town, instruct them to remove the sign saying no, uh, stating that it's a private beach. Yeah, um, just so we're clear on this, Harbor Road itself is a private road. Mm -hmm. Part of it. Well, there's also money it's right private. <laughs> part of it. You've got to remember that that old launch site, part of that road is within that launch site, and that's now town property. Yeah, there is. Uh, you may remember that we uh, we actually Fred and and I and others went to the U.S. Department of uh, what was it Fred which department Department of the Interior Department of the Interior oh. because they are the ones who regulate the what was deeded to us in the 1950s I right. think it was yeah. it was a um, Fred is correct there were two underwater mostly underwater lots that are right next to the pier. To get there, we were also deeded an old right of way yeah. that ran through the center of the uh, 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 Harbor Condominium. No, no, there were several. First, it was the restaurant, the oh, Ocean yes. Walk restaurant. We ran through the middle of the building. Then through the Destin Avenue condominiums. Oh, then nice. through the the development that we're talking about now, right. the uh, the condominiums down on uh, next to the harbor, wow. and uh, we were. Finally, after dealing with the Department of Interior, we were allowed to release, uh, b because this, this came up because, first of all, the Ocean Walk wanted to put in a, uh, a deck in between their property and Ocean Boulevard, and that right-of-way ran right through that. So that had to be stopped because they, they had that uh, problem. So that part, the Ocean Walk part, was released. The Dustin Avenue condominiums was released by the board, wow. but the third segment was not released. That's one that runs through actually one of the corner of one of the buildings oh in those condominiums. So they have a title problem, uh, actually. It, it crosses Harbor Road. So that little portion where that right of way crosses Harbor Road, Fred is correct, there are some town rights in that. Yep. The town also has an easement over Harbor Road so that we can get to the public safety pier, Good the land of which was deeded to us wow. uh, to build that mm -hmm. safety pier. We had to have a way to get to it. So we, we are one of a number of owners of rights to get to that. <laughs> right. um, that's not quite the same, however, as the public. Um, I think the beach that's there actually, because it's beyond the high water mark, maybe state property rather than town property, except to the extent that we have two little lots there oh. that are mostly underwater. So there, there are some title problems, but I, it's certainly not a private beach. Right. It's yeah, either owned it by... No private beach. It's certainly right. in the zoning requirements for that, because it passed with the way the people were, never to uh, block people from that. Right. right. And that is in the agreements that were made when that place was zoned. Yeah, wow. ba back in 2000 when this yeah. development was approved um, Golden Corridor was the name of the developer Rick probably oh, yes. remembers that uh, there were about 50 provisions that were enacted by the part-time planner we were in the in, in, a, in between planners and that we had a visiting planner that came through and uh, that was unfortunately uh, I think the one provision that was not specifically addressed was that little boardwalk that's now the subject of that sign. Yeah. I, mean, I make a motion that Mark research this and that we come up with this very specific that it, it's not private, it's not private, and, it, it, and that there's public access to that beach. Because nobody should be able to cut any beach off. And it says it in the zoning. And uh, if you go back and look in the zoning, and if it's yep. in the zoning, that we enforce it. Yeah, I'll second that. I fit. have a quick question. Is part of this going like under some of these buildings? Part of the town's right of way or 
the old right of way that w we were yeah. deeded by the Department of the Interior yeah. cuts through a corner of one of the buildings. Can we have that removed and taken off? The, well, no, I mean, that's, we've, we've already, already been, 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 been searched. So let's just go ahead. That was second. something that went on for All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. We had this here in our packet for 5 Garland Street. Mm -hmm. Is there any action we need to take on this? Is it? No, it's just for your information. Okay. I make a motion that we adjourn at uh, 925. <laughs> I knew that motion was coming. Second. <laughs> I'll second. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you.